What's happening, weirdos? This is Kevin Smith. Holy shit. I've wanted to have Kevin Smith on this podcast literally since we started this podcast, but just recently uh, I found an in to him, and I'm so glad that we got together. As you're about to see, it is a funny, silly, uh, free-flowing, free-forming, and long-ass conversation that I that we both I happen to know we both really really enjoyed. So let's get to it as quickly as possible. I am going on tour. It's the Where Were We tour. I have the dates here. We are going to be in Toronto, Ontario, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Boston, Chicago, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Atlanta, Charlotte, and Washington D.C. We may be adding some more dates there, but those are the confirmed ones and tickets. I'm very much hoping I'm recording this on Monday. Uh, but it comes out on Wednesday. I'm pretty sure we're going to have the website up by then, so go to PeteHolmes.com for tickets to that one. Hope to see you there. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, I do a monthly show here at the Largo Theater. Thank you to all the weirdos that came out for this uh, past one. We had Neil Brennan. It was so fun. It was incredible. The next one, I promise, is going to be amazing. As always, go to Largo-LA.com for tickets. Always the highlight of my month uh, and always wonderful to have weirdos in the audience there. And if you like this show, why not try a Pete's Pick like our friends at MeUndies. Which MeUndies am I wearing? I I remember putting these on this morning because these are literally like four-leaf clover MeUndies. Now, we've all heard of gut instinct, but have you ever heard of butt instinct? But it's it's when your butt tells you it wants new undies. You need to listen to your butt. Luckily, hey, I'm wearing my lucky undies. Luckily, we work with MeUndies, makers of the most buttery, soft, and sustainable undies, bralettes, and socks that exist. So make your booty and your whole body happy with items designed to make your life more comfortable. I heard about MeUndies like a lot of people on a podcast like this one, and Val and I did a top to tails reboot of our entire underwear drawer, including my PJs, including onesies, and I have not looked back. That was years ago. They're incredibly comfortable, and I like the fun patterns for real. I put these on, and it put me in a little bit better of a mood this morning. So let your skin sing a song of joy with undies, socks, and bralettes that feel as if they're spun from silken clouds. Guarantee guaranteed to be the softest stuff you've ever felt in your life. Their signature micro-modal fabric is sustainable, breathable, and stretchy as heck. It's available in sizes extra small to 4XL, and they have new colors and prints dropping weekly, so there's always something exciting to check out. Try their free-to-join membership for free shipping. I'm sorry, it's (laughs) try their free-to-join membership for free shipping on every order and exclusive perks, like an item shipped to your door every month secret sales, and early access to their newest stuff. I am a member. I'm surprisingly excited when my blue uh, package of MeUndies shows up. I open it, and uh, in fact, my daughter is often quite excited to see what the pattern is as well because sometimes it's something super fun, like tacos and hot sauce. That's one of my favorites. (laughs) And MeUndies has a great offer for weirdos. For any first-time purchasers, you get 20% off plus free shipping and return. So to get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash weird. That's MeUndies.com slash weird. Second up, one of our oldest and one of my absolute favorite Pete's picks. Here it is for the video viewers. This is Alpha Brain from our friends at On It. God, I wish I knew about Alpha Brain when I was in college. Honestly, I wish I knew about it for things that weren't even academic. I love using Alpha Brain. It is a nootropic which helps with memory and focus. It's not a stimulant. It's got earth-grown ingredients that help with concentration. They help me with creativity. They help me get into a flow state. And I absolutely, absolutely swear, swear, swear by it. It helps 
helps me think, it helps me recall, it helps me access words, it helps me get into that creative state, like I was saying. It is not caffeinated, it does not keep you up. In fact, I sometimes take it later in the evening, sometimes it gives me cool dreams and helps me remember my dreams, which is a really cool perk. But for the past like six, seven, eight years, I haven't done a podcast, I haven't written a script, I haven't done stand-up, I haven't acted, I haven't improvised without taking two or sometimes three Alpha Brain 15 minutes beforehand. It is absolutely my secret weapon. It has 100% changed my life. And if you do something that involves your brain, chances are you do, or even if you just want to improve your quality of life when you're not working. I sometimes take this before Val and I go on dates just to be a little bit more there. Uh, Try it. The best way to support the show is to give it a try. Best way to see if it works for you, to give it a try. So go to onit, O-N-N-I-T dot com slash weird and you will get 10% off everything you see there. That's onit.com slash weird. You'll get 10% off and do your noodle a favor. All right, everybody, hope to see you on tour. Again, go to PeteHolmes.com for tickets, and we will see you in all of those cities that I mentioned up top. In the meantime, enjoy this incredible chat with, I'm going to say it, my new friend, Kevin Smith. Get into it. living right here with the AC. God, you feel it out there? Dude, I just installed this. And you're moving? Well, I'm keeping the studio. So you'll cut, this is where you'll come to work. How far is the house? The hoops? It's up in Ohio. Ever ever? You would imagine I would know where that is, but is that far away? <laughs> I've heard of it. It's is it far? I've lived out here for only twenty years, so I haven't caught up with all the trendy no, man. neighborhoods. You uh, don't. You know, it's not a trendy neighborhood. It's a small. It's like a farm town. It's oh, like I, we. It's like it's like north. It's ninety minutes. 90 minutes north. So what's that all about? You just don't want to... First of all, look, I watched you on Steve-O, and I am not going to let you interview me because I would love... I'm going to touch your knee gently. I would love nothing more than the radiant glow of your loving attention. It's so nice. But I was watching it, and I was like, man, I'm trying to get some intel on Kevin, and all I learned, I learned about Steve-O. Um, it's my favorite thing in the world to do on, on podcasts. It's to and, flip it. Well, it's just, you know, fucking... <laughs> it's like I, it's like watching people play video games. You're just like you should give it, give me it, and you just want to do it yourself. Oh, of course. So when you're like on like Seth Meyers or fucking like Colbert, you're like, d- 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 here I'll take over, and they seem to love it. Unless he's joking around. Every time Colbert is just like, I love when you come on. I have to, I don't have to do a fucking thing. Yeah, that's the- sit there for seven minutes and let you roll. That's the compliment that I give guests too, and I already know you're going to be this way. Is uh, Conan. Uh, forgive, but he called me a day off once. He was like, you're a day off. And I was like, that's the yeah, best that compliment is, is, you can get. cool. It's a cool compliment. And you're a day off. And my wife, Val, uh, was like, I think you're going to have a great time with Kevin because he's, she loves <coughs> your podcast. She's like, he's a jukebox. And I was like, well, I just want to make sure I pick the right songs. Oh, you but pick I, any song you want. No, I feel that way. She was like, he talks about jerking off to his wife's asshole and all this stuff. So I was like, <laughs> well, great. Not for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, mean you haven't done it for a long time? Or no, you I still do, but talk I just don't talk about it because she was like, stop telling people. And I was like, content, man. That's my whole fucking life is I need content. She's like, not that. Content? Yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's content. I'm I, so delighted you went with content as opposed to content. Oh, which, okay. yeah. Content is, I come is what his diaphragm is. That's where they, exactly. <laughs> we call that's diaphragm. That's put it in. <laughs> Hold on. I got to get my, con- oh, I, I, I've been pre-canceled just for going along with the script. <laughs> exactly. Not really. That's going a- along. Don't throw it off on me. I was you going can, off of cum tent. You can't be, this is I fact. was doubling down on cum tent. Kevin, I'm going to put us both I at I tried ease. to become edgelord in cum, the face of cum tent. Become? I feel like it was a challenge that was thrown down. And I it went, was. And I suggested, I didn't even th- come with, yeah, but I said, you could have went. Cunt tent. To show you what a not brave comedian I am. You like a brave comedian, they would just probably would have just yelled cum tent. Exactly. I, I had to backdoor it and be like, Someone with balls might say. Well, good to, you know. to backdoor it would be a bum tent. <laughs> Very good. But you can't be unless canceled. you were in fucking England. That'd be fanny. T- fanny no, tent. That's the front. Fanny tent. Minge. That's but the front is fanny. Minge right? is a fanny. Yeah, that I, as well. The minge is also a fanny. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the We've got is, it. I believe the we're minge. 16. I believe the minge is also a fanny. Is yeah, the, the title of the, your next book, isn't it? 
Pete Holmes, the Minge is also a fanny. And, a other, guide to, and other meditations <laughs> on a life in Hollywood. It's not a guide to going to Great Britain. What, have you told the people that your life in Hollywood is coming to an end? Have you what told you people that you're moving? Are we allowed to talk about that or no? That's not news. We've been there for a while. Can we tell people that I was like, oh, hi. Is Where that is like that? next to Las Feliz? <laughs> Pete told me that it was 90 minutes away. It's a whole other fucking place, apparently. But Why you, are you leaving? What's that all about? Are you one of those cats that's just like, oh, fuck this town? First of all, don't try to Steve O me right I'm now. I'm just curious. I got to know. I, I'm going to tell you, I don't consider it leaving. We're... <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I talk to my mom and she's like, we never talk. And I'm like, we're talking now. I'm in Hollywood right do this? now. Does your mother go, Kevin, will you sign? Well, she doesn't say Kevin. Does she, does what she, does she go, call you? She, well, she, Tiger, she said to me. She'll, but does your mother, I want to make this about you. Does your yeah, mother, I mean, I'll refuse. Does your mother ever go, will you sign it to me? Like she wants your autograph. Aww. I always have to stop my mother and be like, Ma, I, I came out of your vagina. Yeah. Like. And you signed the you walls signed in there. You signed me. Yeah, I signed the walls in there. She literally signed me. And I found this out from a periodontist. I went to get some periodontal Perry? work. I don't know Perry. He's this dude that's fucking, he gets me my Oh, weed. the Irishman, odontist. Yes, yes, periodontist. And he, he's such, he's a, a genius with fucking uh, sativa. No, he's, uh, I went to the periodontal uh, specialist. What is a periodontal specialist? Well, that's who you go to when the dentist is like, I can't help you anymore. Because I went to my dentist and, and uh, I hadn't been, you know, I was like, oh man, I haven't seen you a couple of years. He goes, seven. He's like, that was when the last time you were here. And I was like, feels like I was just here. I also just went to the dentist and they said it's been eight years. Since and then, and did they then send you to the periodontist? They were like, well, you've been brushing over those eight years. So like, we don't have much to talk about. What, so a periodontist is if you need less attention than a dentist would Way give more you? attention than a more dentist. More attention. If a dentist throws up their hands and it is says, like- bring in the peri. I can't help you. Like, I need to say, the, the dentist came into me and he goes, Kevin, I have really bad news. And I was like, let me guess. I have gingivitis because I've seen Listerine commercials. And I was like, well, I guess that's as bad as it gets. You yeah, get yeah, gingivitis. Yeah. I think and he they goes, invented gingivitis. They might have. He goes, that, it could be marketing. Yeah. He was like, uh, no, he goes, gingivitis. Oh, I wish. He goes, you have periodontal disease. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, it's pretty much what it sounds like. And I got to send you to a periodontist. Wait, the name of the disease is his job? Yeah. The, the guy. That's And he he's like, you have me disease. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's the dentist, but he sent me to the periodontal specialist. He was like, you you'd got think, me disease. <laughs> you'd think you'd get more of it from this man. You Doctor, go to the guy with the... <laughs> Dr. Z, I know, right? To you get think less. Get a lot, but he gives you more, more attention in yeah. the mouth. He made me feel so good. This will bring me back to my mother, though. Because, you know, he was like, look, uh, you have a hyperimmune system. Like, because he was going, you've got your, your shit's breaking down. Like, uh, if we don't work fast... Your jaw will erode. You'll have like little old man jaw and shit like that. So really? what the fuck's that all about? Yeah. And he goes, uh, not like I'm in the fucking looks business anyway. It's mostly about what I say, but still, I mean, nobody he, wants to. Have don't the, tell me what turns me on. Kevin. Exactly, my <laughs> bad. But um, but he was like, you might, uh, he, 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 we might need to get you going as quickly as possible. I got to take out these two fucking molars. I got to pack you, pack you in with bone. Bone dust? What is it? Like they give you fake bone that they put in there and hope it becomes real bone. And if it does, then we could put implants in I'm there. Sorry, and shit like that. This is the DVD commentary for Tusk. Is what I'm <laughs> very much so. Right I know. As the dude was telling me that, I was like, I manifested this, didn't <laughs> ah, I? You did. With that fucking movie. Wait, make a better, like make a more bright movie and your life will get brighter. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've, if only I've learned the lessons. So he told me, he goes, uh, you know, yeah, it's bad. We got to, you got, can it cure it? I said, can you cure it? He goes, no, we can arrest it. But that's about it. You'll have this for the rest of your life. And so I was like, fuck, man. I was like, I wish I'd, you know, like my mom said, I should have brushed more because I'm a terrible brusher. Even though I don't have bad breath, I just don't like, Are I use sure? a lot of Listerine. You sure? I am because I sure? drink fucking Listerine. I don't, sure? I don't swish. I drink it. <laughs> I'm like a former alcoholic. No. I, I do no switch it and spit it out. I'm colon. like a fucking wine person. I yeah. swing and spit it right the Could fuck out. Could I see out. something in Cool Mint? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You fucking know my brand, yeah. bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I literally yeah. am a Cool Mint guy. I remember. So, yeah, you got to go Cool Mint. He goes, it's soft on you. You know, the hard, the fucking OG formula is a little too hard for my 52-year-old It was designed to clean floors. Yeah, yeah. like antiseptic yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So he goes, uh, he, I said, fuck, I wish I brushed my teeth more. He goes, oh, you could have brushed your teeth the way a, a human should which yeah. I thought was low case shade. That's, that's he goes, and you'd still be here today. I said, why? why? That's what I said. That's what I well, said. Just like a podcaster yeah. I, or a scientist, I asked a question. I said, why? And we are like scientists. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> he goes, well, um, when you're born, you are covered in a bio layer 
of bacteria. <laughs> yes, I've so heard is of that it. right? And he said, yeah. He goes, your bio layer of bacteria is what kicks in your immune system. Yes. Um, we have a four-year-old, so I, we were told about this layer. And also like that holding at the beginning, like I, I got my shirt off and I held my baby. So you were like, like smell get, me, yeah, you motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna mine. be involved. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be involved. I'm gonna be involved. <laughs> I screamed. You won't leave me behind. Waking you up. came from her, but you came from me first, kind of. Dude. I know it takes an egg and a seed, but <laughs> come on, fucking let me be involved. Joseph Campbell, I know you got married at Skywalker Ranch. I did, for uh, that reason, because I'm a big Joseph Campbell Well, you'll fan. know, jo are you really? <laughs> Not at all. You son of a I bitch. just know that, you know, Lucas you know talked about him. Fuck George Can Lucas. I fucking finish my <laughs> bio kidding. layer story? Because it's amazing. Yeah, but I'm going to interject. Bio, it's like, bio layer, layer for those at home who are just like, hey man, what is that? Because I asked the doctor, I said, what is that? And he goes, that's what you get when you're born. Uh, he's, I see, he goes, when you're in the womb, you have, uh, you know, you're in a 100% fucking pristine environment. When you're born, the bio layer kicks in and that's where, you know, fucking your immune system starts. And I said, so is it when like you hit the air? Like they pull you out? Like when they smack the baby, is that when you get the bio layer? <laughs> and he goes, no, the bio layer comes through the birth canal. And I was like, so what you're telling me is that in my mouth is my mother. Yeah. And my body has been fighting my mother, the taste of my mother out of my mouth for so long that it has eroded my jaw. And he's like, that's exactly it. Essentially, my my I have a, a hyperimmune system. Which he goes, "Have you are you ever sick?" I was like, "No, I'm like Bruce Willis in that fucking movie," yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah, Sixth Sense." I'm like, "No, the other fucking movie." Where he thought you were dead. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "You're dead." <laughs> surprise! That's a really weird. I was way like, to "Wait till we get to the end of this appointment. You're gonna M. fucking be surprised." Done more. He he. I was like, "I don't get sick at all." He goes, "You uh, have a hyperimmune system. That means like whatever comes through the transom, your body goes at." like in a ridiculous way. It would be akin to a mouse is coming at you and to defend yourself, you use a bazooka to destroy it. Mm -hmm. He's going, your body just overcompensates. And I was like, well, shit, man. That means like, I'm like Wolverine. And my periodontist goes, do you have abs? And I said, no. And he goes, well, then you're not like Wolverine because when I think of Wolverine, I think of abs. Okay, this guy needs to be fired. This guy needs to be hired for my job. He's better at what I do than what I and do. Wolverine doesn't have abs. We yet. should switch like fucking Freaky Friday. I should fuck around in mouths, you know, do yes. some moral work, and you he should, should be on a stage yeah. telling jokes about my mom's pussy. It was nuts. <laughs> So I was like, this is what's going on. I said, he, he go, well, I, I, I told, I promised my mother, because I was on the phone with her earlier today. I said, I was doing press. She said, Tiger, when you do press, make sure you give me a shout out. And I said, I will. And there it was. Mom's and that was pussy. it? Yeah. She's going to hear this because she listens to all my press. She and she'll be like, oh, Tiger, why'd you have to use the P word? And I'll be like, mom. She'll be like, oh, you're in court. Periodontist? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'll be Call like, because you know that fucking Irishman, ma, who fucking won't leave you alone. He's always bothering you, trying to look up your fucking dress. That fair fucking periodontist. I might have to kick his ass. Really? <laughs> the, uh, the Irish guy, not, not, not the fucking mouth doctor. So yes, the mouth doctor told me that my mom is still in my mouth. And because of that, my body has worked overtime to get it out since I was born. Yeah. You're stoned um, because I, Always. I saw you get uh, I mean, that's stoned. Well, that's, that's, saying, that's like saying you're stoned because it's a day with a Y in it. <laughs> Um, when I come to talk, I come stoned. I mean, look, when I wake up, I get stoned. But especially if I'm going to talk because it's joyful, right? Like being able to bullshit. Like think about it. We grew up in a time where you had to watch other fucking people do it. Talk. Now, yeah, now it's like you can do it. You can make your own fucking show. So I that's relate bliss to, that. to me. I just like love to be baked and have good conversation now. Well, the, the moment I, you took it to Perry Odontist, I said, this is, this is where this I is need gonna to be. This is going to be okay. This is where I need to be. Uh, we that's going to be a runner. Yo, sure. I want to talk about the time that periodontist like fucking sat me down and was like, when your father's dead, I'm going to fuck your mother. Perry? I was 12. <laughs> 12. Wait, who said that? Periodontist. The fucking character you made up, Pete. Like, if you're not going to play. I am. I mean. Just for a second, it sounded really real. That's because I'm, right, thank you. That's because yeah. I'm a good actor. Yeah. And nobody gives me credit for that because they're like, oh, he's Silent Bob. It's so easy not to talk. As you've heard me speaking for like since I walked in. Clearly not talking is a performance for That's me. That's true. 
So I may be one it's of the greatest effort. actors you ever met. Based on that moment alone, you just bought my periodontal. I did thing. buy your periodontist. I'm going to see if I could sleep, uh, slip it in later on. Another in splinter cell? Yeah. No, put a bin later on. And, and when you've forgotten it, another peri. bring it back and then have you be like, wait, who? And well, I'll now I'm like, on, on the lookout. It's your character. It's your joke. I'm on the lookout. Yes. Has anything happened to you that you can't explain? Have you ever seen a ghost or an alien? Or well, well, All right. No. One thing gonna, supernatural happened yeah. to me, kind of. But I can't explain it, but it's not weed. You um, can't explain it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, right. But it is kind of, ooh. I was, in, uh, I was back when I was a Catholic kid and way into the brand. The CK? Oh, yeah, fucking. You were a <laughs> Louis CK? Lounge. No, fucking, <laughs> why is he? Louis Catholic kid. That's what CK stands for. People don't know that. Now I periodontist your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> Is that true? No! Oh, my God. <laughs> you are a fucking great actor. I'm periodontist Oh, my you. God. We should do, like, Vladimir and Estragon. We are two of the greatest actors of all time. We completely Let's fooled each other. That was our first, our first one was real bad. All right, now we're even, though, and now we got to be on the fucking lookout for the next one. I just one. want to make sure you're uncomfortable, as God my guess. damn it. Yeah, now I'm on, my, I, on the edge. No, you don't. Let's be safe. Let's Wait, be where fun. was I? You were talking about the unexplainable thing. That all right, so I was back back when I was a Catholic kid. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you know, can I, this is, I mean. You can. Can I? This yeah. is a Louis C.K. thing. It's not a thing. It's not about what he did or who he is or anything. Sure. It's just a factoid. When Clerks played at the New Director's New Films Festival. There's too many news. There's a lot of news. Um, it's their brand. It's the sister film festival. It's a New York film festival. It's run out of MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art. I threw that out there in case kids don't know anymore. Anyway. Yeah, sure. When Clerks played at that festival, a short film played before it each time by a new director as well. Uh, the short film was called Ice Cream, and the director was Louis Catholic Kid. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I met that dude like eons ago when he yeah. was a, like a filmmaker and oh, a wow. friend of Chris Rock. Like yeah. That's how I knew him. And shit. I had and Louis' he, first album, like the first CD you had to like look real hard for because I saw him on Conan. And I, like and you were young, like, that's fucking funny. Like super, super young, Louis. Back when you would watch someone on late night, and you had, like Gaffigan too. I just went and bought these CDs. You can't even get not to be like a cool guy, but like do you it, can't even get these cool CDs guy. anymore. I'm just, you know, when you're a real let me fan. Ask you, let me ask you this. Meaning of a, a I know it's your fan. podcast, and you're supposed to ask me shit, but I'm gonna ask you this. That's wrong. I, I have just you ever that. gotten laid by being like, I have Jim Gaffigan's first CD. <laughs> hey, you ever heard of Economics too? <laughs> That's right. It's called Economics 2. There's Kevin. somebody out there that's just like, you know, up until now I hadn't considered sucking his dick, but holy shit. Luigi's Doghouse. <laughs> the other one was called Luigi's Doghouse. And because I opened for Jim, I was like, what do these titles mean? Economics 2 is just a name of a textbook he had in high school. Right. Not a great name. And Luigi's Doghouse, I think, was when you were in his family, if you were in the doghouse, that say Luigi's Doghouse. I'm just stuck on the fucking humble brag of and when I opened for him that you rolled over so quickly but if you if you think it's a humble it brag for impact. to MC for Jim Gaffigan in I 2006 do. I, do think, I do look where you are today that's how you got there if you chart the course no I got begins. very lucky with my the people I opened for Bill Burr Jim Gaffigan I always got lucky I always shout out Dan Kaufman who got me those gigs is that right yeah how did he get you the gigs he couldn't do them so they were, he was like, I'm not available, but this guy is Oh, so good. it wasn't like, this isn't like a CD story of like, he did the work. And when I mean the work, I mean the oral work. And I, yeah, And exactly. I don't mean periodontal. <laughs> I mean, like he got in there in a way that Perry never does anymore. That's not in 10 years of marriage. That's yes. That, and there's a guy, if you want gigs, periodontal will He'll get, get you, you There's a whole gigs. market. Yes. It's like the rounders market. There's Cause a he's a guy game. who's like, he's a good haggler. But at the end of the day, he's like, all right. <laughs> oh my God. No, Dan Kaufman, who actually, I, I think he still lives in this neighborhood. Uh, and I didn't leave Hollywood. Damn it, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, we're on your. We're you on your unexplainable where you're going? thing. We're already there. I'm still a have functioning told, member of Hollywood. These, have you told these? People Are you where telling me as a producer and filmmaker, you're like, well, he doesn't live in Hollywood anymore. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm unavailable. Like, I'm literally going I'll home. I'll audition in Telling person. all my people to pull you off my list because I was like, he moved. The shred. <laughs> He's out. He left. You know, if you shred my headshot, it looks even more like Ike Barinholtz. What does that even mean? <laughs> that's hysterical. Oh we God, just get confused. Is that how it? it must be? Yeah. Based, based but then on he the... got kind of hot. He got like ripped and hot. Fuck the, you, Ike. The Suicide Squad movies. Yeah. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, and he was in too. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Oh, and so he got buff for that as well. He just looks great. Don't you hate when someone who looks like you starts looking great? No, I. but, you know, I, <laughs> I do suspect an agenda. 
That's like, for sure. Like he's working. Nobody, at well, it. like fucking Chris Pratt for years. I'm like, right on, man. I'm like, yeah, I remember. I could, Pratt. I could play that role because he looks like. Yeah. And then one day, Star Lord, and you're like, I think Chris Pratt wants to be famous. I think they should change his last name because Pratt is a fat guy's last name. It really is. It really it's is. Like, there he is. Jack hey, Pratt. Pratt. Like, Jack Pratt and his and his his wife Pratt. He'd eat, wouldn't, he'd eat no fat. His wife would eat no lean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, that means his wife was was thicker. Anyway, I'm just saying, if a gym teacher thicker yells is, Pratt, thick is get not out a of bad here. thing now, though, especially I, if it's got two C's. Okay. Right. I've never seen it written out like that. What but, are yeah. you fucking? Are you not? No not, wonder you live in fucking farm country. How dare here you? Here in, in Hollywood, okay. Pete, this is, thick with this two is C's brutal. is very, very popular. The other and by thing, Hollywood, can I tell you, you mean something? Instagram? Can I tell you? Because I is, have that in you Ohio, do. too. I ain't taking that away from you. <laughs> the, um, I, I, I shared a story recently with a friend of mine uh, from back home. where uh, Ben was, Affleck. It wasn't that. It was a non-famous friend. I have lots of those. Uh, <laughs> this non-famous friend is a major superstar in my life. Like, if I say this person's name in my world, people go, oh. Like, just an icon. But to the rest of the world, a Jersey a icon. Thing. Yes. And not even a Jersey icon in the whole state. But in my world, right, everyone who was like f f rock star famous before I got into the business for just being local legends still remained so yeah. in my life. So I was yeah. talking to one of those uh, figures, an ex-girlfriend of mine, and there was a photo of her. She's in Clerks 3. She was in Clerks. She played Heather Jones. She's a little girl at the counter um, who uh, the guy was like, I'm a trainer. Like she's sitting next to him, Heather, Heather Jones, her, her character's name was. She comes back in Clerks 3. Um, when we redo that scene, the movie's full of like, holy shit, they're making fucking clerks in Clerks 3. Yeah. So it's real like fucking down the rabbit hole, meta snake sucking its own dick like that. In any event, Burra, Burra. there's a photo of me and her. Photo? What the fuck? There's photo. a photo, I believe they're called now. <laughs> it's because I said That's not opposed to a photograph. A photograph. A photo. Of me and her and my friend Ernie O'Donnell on the set that they used recently in our hometown paper, the Asbury Park Press. And in the photo... Ernie is wearing tight, like, lifting pants because he plays a trainer. And Kim is a very slight, petite, and very slender girl wearing tight jeans. And the two of them have what I can only describe as enormous thigh gap going on. <laughs> like, you could drive a truck through their fucking legs. Sure. And, you know, I'm a guy with my mother's childbearing hips and thighs, so I notice thigh gap. Men and women, I'm like, look at that shit. I wish I had that kind of thigh gap. So I was texting with her, and I was like, Look, fucking YouTube belong in th on the cover of Thigh Gap Weekly. <laughs> and she goes, what's that? And I was like, the, the Thigh Gap? Like, it's a, like, you know, fucking. It's the wage discrepancy between legs. Yeah, and, and you, well, I didn't use that. That would have been a great thing to say. Well, Instead, was... I just did, what do you mean? And stammered for a bit. And then I looked it up online to see, like, how long it's been in the nomenclature. About a decade. Yeah. No familiarity with it whatsoever. I felt positively she she. I felt bougie. I felt like I had my finger on the pulse of a ten year old term. Yeah, yeah. You got to break it to somebody with somebody thigh gap else. Means. And now I'm betting she uses it all the time. I'm betting she answers the phone, thigh gap and shit like that. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I bought these jeans at the thigh gap. Um, <laughs> would you finish your unexplainable story? All right. So back when I was a Catholic kid, I, well done. Yeah. You got us back there. I'll do it. Um, I uh, still believed in a big, bad way. You know, I was raised in the faith and it never occurred to me to question. It was so strange. Like, I remember, you know, sitting down with my parents and them being like, yes, there is no Santa Claus when I was like six or whatever the fuck. And, but they never said, also, we believe a lot of things that, you know, aren't easily proven and probably equally as childlike in nature. Um, I always found it strange that they gave me a pass on Santa and they were like, yeah, but Jesus and God, well, that shit's real. And right. they're like, well, prove it. And, you know, they're like, well, we don't. We faith it and blah, blah, blah. So I was a kid. I just believed it. I never, like, pushed back on it until I made Dogma, which, like, I was in my 20s at that point. So it was kind of late in life. But mm. at this point, I wasn't. And so this is me going to fucking film school. And I went to um, church one day. And I was sitting in church and I was, I guess you could call it like fraught because um, life was changing. Like I was making this big move out west. I was by myself. Like I was going to go to film school. It was just me alone as opposed to like historically I'd always been surrounded by friends and shit like mm -hmm. that. Um, I was out of my, my relationship with uh, the girl I was talking about. Like everything was just completely. Thank you. 
changing. And and so I, you know, went to the one place that historically had always given one comfort. So I go to this church um, in uh, Federal Way, Washington area. And I'm sitting in the fucking church and, uh, you know, not praying like uh, our father weren't him, but just doing the, you know, kind of conversation with God. In freestyle. So the freestyle in it. And um, essentially saying, like, I don't know. Jesus, is the story that bad that you're checking your text? I mean, it's, my, it's on Do Not Disturb. So I'll, I'm like, I'll go right to the end. No, no, don't you dare. I'm worried it's my wife out. and something's Holy wrong with shit, the baby. That is the, the I, phone I, is off, Kevin. I've been podcasting the phone 12, is off. 15 years. I know you're the, you're you the pod like phone. You've got to pretend you got Hollywood Babylon. I'm, I'm listening to this story about the, the thigh gap the phone comes out, the truth and is we're getting revealed. to an ex- unexplained was, thing. And deep. I'm, Just honestly, because I'm interested. Broke I, mean, eye contact I was a little bit troubled by your uh, you Jesus to go is fake because the Santa's be like, well, Just because he's Santa's not paying attention to me. Mean, Jesus, I, I mean, might Josephus, as well see if John Apatow historical, me a historical act <laughs> authority <laughs> did uh, qualify that a man named Jesus lived in Nazareth. All right, you win, you win. So... <laughs> that, that's Vladimir Neshigan just going at it. <laughs> I'm having fun. We're I just feel like wait, we're just waiting for Godot. I really we? thought it might be. Um, my I don't wife. care who the fuck you thought. It. I Look, know I'm you thought touch, it was. I'm going to touch your knee. It was Is Judd Apatow. Okay? You reached for the phone like it was Judd Apatow. I reached for the phone like it was the Judd Apatow of my family, which is Valerie. <laughs> Judd Apatow is, that is what to you comedy. Call as, your wife, and go, she's okay Jeff, with that. Only during sex. <laughs> she, I love you, my Judd Apatow. And then, I, the family. and then I do my Judd impression afterwards. I go, "Was that okay with you?" <laughs> it's not right, but it's funny. It's fucking adorable. Yeah. Um, so there I am at church, and I'm uh, having some crisis and shit, crisis. and uh, a priest, a crisis indeed, and <laughs> a, a priest, a guy that I assumed a priest. Uh, came up to me and was just like, uh, "You okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I was just going through." And I kind of did a mini version of what I was going through in my head. And the dude goes, um, well, you know, that's not as bad as it may sound inside. Everything's been okay. And so uh, I said, all right, thank you. And dude fucked off. And then four minutes later, the real priest <laughs> comes up to me and is just like, we're closing up. And I was like, hey, who's the other guy? Because I go to this place like, you know, fucking whenever I visit my uncle. So I'm familiar with the fucking priest who is the guy who's now talking to me. And the younger priest, the one who talked to me, the one who had kind of longish hair and a beard, looked kind of familiar, looked on brand. He was like, there is no other priest. And I was like, ah, ooh. Don't ruin your story. I feel like you're heckling your own story. It's true. Wait, a priest came and sat next to you who looked like Jesus yeah. and told you everything's going to be okay. And then the other then priest he told me that away. priest didn't exist. And then the other priest comes in who's pledged to not lie. Yes. Was like, there is no hip, beautiful yes. priest that you would clearly <laughs> either, imagine. Either that or he was just like, pay no attention to the yeah, beautiful exactly. priest. Tell me... What you you opened the story by saying you had an explanation for yeah. it? Yeah, it was Jesus. Had to be, <laughs> had to be Jesus, right? White sweet Jesus, of course, man. WSG the on brand Wonder Bread Jesus that I was raised with. Yeah, Absolutely. the right one. So, yes. do you think it was a like a hallucination? Do you think you like? No, I wasn't even a smoker back then. No, I don't think I. I don't think it was a hallucination. I think uh, I needed something in the universe provided. Back when I was a kid, I would be like God. And now I'm just like, no, I guess the universe sensed I needed somebody to say something to me. Now. And it manifested. I mean, that's a life-changing thing. Or was the guy not real? Like, if I was there, would I have seen him? Yes. You think so? Uh, No, I'm asking. Was the guy real or not? Never saw him again. But to be fair, I I don't It's not like I hang out in Federal Way, Washington all the time. Could be that if I spend a week there, (laughs) I'd like run into him at the convenience store. Jesus, I thought you were fake Jesus. Oh, my God, you're the one that fucking told me that everything's going to be all right. He's like, it is. $1.50, please. You know, because yeah. I'm buying like a pack of gum. Really yeah, sure. It's a pack of gum. Well, High end gum. That's Ar- artisanal gum. Let's what be honest. What is the gum from Clerks? Chulis gum. Chulis. Which we actually made in the real world. You could buy it. You can buy Chulis gum? At jayandsilentbop.com. You can buy anything. Edit I'm, that I'm less out. a storyteller or filmmaker than I am a, a salesman retailer at this point. I yes. make movies so that I can sell shirts and shit. Well, then you figured it out. <laughs> I did. I basically it took me a lifetime, but I was like, "Oh, just George Lucas, this shit, I guess." So what? Am, so that's basically like seeing an angel or something. That's a fantastic answer. Star Wars. I've often referred to it as like seeing an angel when I was a kid. How dare you? 
<laughs> use a misplaced. You're going back to modifier. that fucking story in the yeah, church. I'm, I'm going back is that to what compliment, your podcast is about? complimenting. Is what it, do you mean? Is, is like the idea stuff? that like we do supernatural? Is this Joe Rogan? I, shit? Talk, 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 have you ever smoked DMT? No, but okay. I've been on Rogan a lot, and he loves to talk about weird shit. Like you know, no, have the, you ever met a ghost? The zeitgeist is aware of that. You're breaking that to me like it's news. Does he I like don't know if you've lifting ever weights to as well? Joe's podcast, but it's pretty interesting. <laughs> he covers a lot of ground. Covers a lot of ground. Very interesting guy. Have you ever done hallucinogens? Uh, I've never. I think the hardest drug that I've ever done in my life is probably, uh, not counting a pharmaceutical that was prescribed for whatever the fuck, a heart thing or something, um, is weed. I've never gone hard. Which is weed. a hallucinogen. I'm sure people have told you that. Oh, this is uh, real life footage of Kevin's brain being blown. I think that attracts. It makes sense. It's a mild hallucinogen. You Have you ever smoked a strand called, like I smoked a strand called LSD and I was like, oh yeah, this is. This and what did it do for you? And do you I have mean, any more of this strain? You can, can buy it anywhere. Welcome to 20. I'll buy it off you if you have more. It sounds like, <laughs> where, is it, it the you. new house up in the farm country? You is know that what? why you moved to Ohio? Because you're going to raise weed and shit like that? <laughs> no, Some of that DMT that's weed? Humble. You are going fucking Joe Rogan, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, well, I could have gone to Austin. That's true. That's where they're where all the comedians well, are going. Well, apparently, it takes a hundred million dollars to move to Austin. What do you mean? That's, that's what he made. Right? Oh, they I, made that I, deal. I didn't know. I know that it's quite expensive. Also, to I, that's what I read in the paper. And then, like a year million. later, I read that it was double that. Tell me a Ben Affleck story. Um, ben Affleck never made two hundred million dollars for a podcast. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. And I thought he was the most clever motherfucker I ever met in my life. Is he clever? He's, he is. Ben Affleck is actually uh, no lie, and I'm being a hundred percent serious. And this is. You think I'm a Ben Affleck hater. You, you're in all. the wrong room. You're, you're, I'm, you're fucking putting words in my mouth. I didn't, I didn't think but, shit about you, Pete. I was okay. about to finish my fucking I just comment, and like, this was a comment. All right. You love comedy. I love Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is one of, hands down, the funniest people I've ever met in my life. I would I actually count him as one of the three funniest people I've ever met in my life. And mind you, I've known Carlin, Chris yeah. Rock, yeah. Pete Holmes. Like, I've met yeah. comedy oh, oh, legends. Oh, Pete Holmes? Oh, hi. <laughs> Farm boy himself. You mean farm boy Pete Holmes? Well, you trying to find fucking Clark Kent up there? You trying to find Cal L from space? You're like, maybe a motherfucker will land in my field. You have no idea how babies have, have landed. Baby. <laughs> we have so many pods, silver pods. Do you really? They're pretty low tech. Like Compared all these to a kids Tesla. keep dropping, and oh, you yeah. guys can't make it work. They're just, like, they all die. <laughs> I would have had. There would have been. If you don't open the hatch, <laughs> it's not negligence. <laughs> I, uh, I, when you started talking about it, for some reason, I thought maybe, you know, comedians bring up Ben Affleck, maybe they're going to tease Ben Affleck. No, like, I feel like I, he I'm catches not, heat. I've got my I wanted you to know that high, you're in a safe and place. And I also don't need to defend him in any stretch of the imagination. My man's doing quite well. So yeah, yeah. I was more like throwing it in your way because I know you like comedy. And this dude, like, super in funny. A, in a perfect world, he would be on fucking stage. Like, whenever he's on SNL, he's legit wonderful. But like, just, Personally, in the real world, as long as I've known him since 95, he's like legit one of the funniest people I've ever met. I agree. So fucking clever. Well, he, 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 I don't know if I could tell this story. Yeah, we'll take it out if you don't like it. It's not that I, I don't like it, but it's just like at the wedding, he like, he gave a speech. And Your as, wedding? Yeah, when I got married, no, at his recent uh, wedding. Oh. Um, he gave a very big speech that, if you're a fan of his writing, which I am, was bliss. Like, look, as much as I'm sure it, it rocked to be on the direct receiving end of it as Jennifer Lopez, just hearing it as yeah. a Ben Affleck fan, I was like lighting my lighter and holding that shit up. Just more of this. Cause it was killer. Oh, funny. Such a good, heartfelt penetrating just as a writer you're like fuck i wish i'd put those eight words together in a sentence do you remember any pull quotes i do and that's why i don't want to go that you don't want to go to yeah. that's his to any tell, voice but... wobble yes little voice wobble. oh god yes. you want some voice wobble yeah, and if i'm directing it but to be more fair voice wobble, let's go again but to be fair that's the thing it's like he's an actor he that that part's not impressive because yeah you don't know he, that's part of the fucking package can you trust it right but the words yeah. Like that's, you know, as a wordsmith yeah. myself, I was like, oh, well, I'd fuck this guy. Yeah, no, I. <laughs> this is so eloquent. Silver tongue devil he is. Yeah, 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 for sure. Incredibly. Uh, but I've always lo thought of him that way. Well, he, I'm telling you, that's why, honestly, like I'm not, now I am humble bragging. I'm going to take a little fucking, I'm humble bragging because I got a lot of weed in my back pocket. I liked it. Thank you. I liked Thank it. You. Thank you. It was a dad, I liked dad it. joke right there. I'm in a Humboldt state. He was very, um, you know, like I'm the guy who beats people up in uh, fucking Dazed and Confused. Uh -huh. And 
in, I wrote him the lead in Chasing Amy. He was also the guy who beats people up in mall rats. But I wrote him the lead in Chasing Amy because I was like, he is so fucking charming in real yeah. life. Yeah. And he became a leading man. I felt so, I wish I'd kept like 10% and been smart and been like, I'm your fucking agent now. Yeah, you could have had that arm again. I'm the captain now, but yeah, exactly. that movie wasn't out yet, so yeah. I couldn't make that reference. No, I know, you can tell by teeth cap, not a teeth cap. <laughs> but when I, I, I watched Chasing Amy, because I love Chasing Amy, yes. to prep for this. Yes. He, he was he playing had, at the movie. He yeah. had his real teeth. He yeah. had his real teeth. He didn't cap him for us, obviously. He capped him at yeah, the you know, behest of Michael Bay. Michael Bay made him cap his teeth for Armageddon. You know, I think Chasing Amy would have been 3% better if he had capped I'll be honest those with you, that's why we didn't get. That's why I didn't get nominated for screenplay. I think so. I missed. I was told by my Cap publicist em. that I missed by three votes. And if we had had Cap Teeth on Ben, three votes, it would have been. Yes, you think Cap Teeth on Affleck would have gotten you fifteen votes? Ex no doubt. And no I doubt. would have been nominated that year for sure. This is why on day one. This is go, why I'm moving to Ohio. I'm bitter about Hollywood. <laughs> I don't know if you should. I think your career will end if you. <laughs> I live. I literally live in the crotch of Hollywood. I live like right above, not above, over it. Like Can I upstairs, ask you why? But right above the Gromit Chinese Theater. I could tell you why. Above yeah. Ben Affleck's house, and that's where he lived. <laughs> <laughs> did you find his old teeth in the sink? I did not. But what I found was um, <laughs> that one was just for me. I really like that well, those, one. Well, when they cap them, they don't. Get, what do no, you think? I they know. Pull the teeth no, out. No, no, no. You cap them. It's not extract According and put in. My Fake friend Perry O'Dontal, whenever they work is. on your mouth, he's yeah. an Irishman who lives next yes, to me. He's, yes. uh, he, he knows a lot about the mouth, the mouth, <laughs> the as they say in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they don't you, pull those teeth out, Pete. They just put teeth on top of them. No, I know. So those teeth are, are you still sure you in know? Because the way you said that before, you were like, did you find his teeth in the sink? Are that you holding no me sense. accountable for a rock I found while digging for a riff? Yes, I am. I am. <laughs> I want your comedy to make sense. Those little Ben <laughs> Affleck teeth yes. are still there. No, they're not. No, they are. No, they're no. underneath the, no, no, the, no. the big teeth. Yes, they're there, but they wouldn't be in the sink at my house. Now, would no, they? we've already abandoned that. No, I'm just I saying, can't because you took us to a weird place. They're there. I under just watched his, that under new. His teeth. There, there's that new Ben Affleck movie, which I thought was fantastic. Which one? Uh, oh God, something water, deep water. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right? the one with uh, Anna Darmus. Yes. I thought it was great. And you and you were looking at his teeth all the But time? every, if you held up a certain light, you would see under the teeth, <laughs> the original <laughs> teeth. You, yeah, are you that offended by the fact that I said he's one of the three funniest people I a ever A little met? bit. I think this is and what's happening. And you got to go for his throat by being like, he's got baby teeth and I could see him in the light. <laughs> so who would fuck that guy? I'll tell you who would. I don't me, know if I have to tell me you. Me and you. Uh, me and uh, according to a few papers. What kind of a- A huge superstar, music superstar as well. Who? Oh, J Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> No, periodontal. You are a salty son of a bitch. <laughs> this has been a difficult chat. I think I think <laughs> we have, I think I think we found the title to your next book, which is All These Fucks Have Baby Teeth. <laughs> Meditations <laughs> on Hollywood by <laughs> from an upper perspective. So you bought when he sold you the house, did he give you a nice price? He gave me the amulet that gave him his career, the magical amulet that granted him the power to become Ben Affleck. He's like, not only do you get the house, you get the amulet? Yes, and th therefore my career got a little bit better, 3% yeah, yeah. better, well, the amulet which is what it would have been if you tapped his teeth <laughs> for chasing Amy. A lot of the juice had been worn off on the amulet because I mean, it be had fair, to elevate his career. Exactly, he used most of it. That's why he gave it to me. Otherwise, you don't give an amulet away. Pete. No. Come on. It's Use like your he, common sense. He gave you, you don't a, give a magic amulet away if it's still magical. You give it when it's done. Well, that's not very Christian, as you said earlier. I, well, the it's good thing is you never pretend, you know, profess to be a Christian of any kind. Where's your second house? <laughs> I don't have one. Come on, Kevin. You, only you. I, believe me, I'm, I came to this place. I came into Pete's empty-ass house. You're telling and me. And I was like, are you moving in or moving out? And he goes, oh, we moved out. I have a massive mansion. I never Ohio. said that. And I was like, I wish you, you were there, have Katie. two fucking houses. I said, when are you, you selling this? That. And he goes, I'm not selling this That's house. That's not true. He goes, I have two houses. And I, at that real. point, I really said, I should have become friends with Judd Apatow. That would have changed the course of my career and I would have had a second fucking house. I only got one lousy ass house. What do you do when you need to get out of Hollywood? I don't. I'm stuck. I'm trapped. <laughs> Take you, me with you to Ohio. You don't have a ranch Ohio in Jersey. How, how, no. How far is Ojai? 90 minutes? 90 minutes. Is it like a always 90 or like sometimes two hours or sometimes an it hour? It was 145 this morning, but, I, but I left at a- Oof, bro. Yeah. That's tough. No. Why do you want to be up there so bad? Why do you want to be in Hollywood? 
I dreamed about this when I was a kid. When and, I have a photo and you've done of it, me, it's over. No, it's no, time I gotta to keep pick it going. a tomato because let me in tell you garden. something. If I don't I, understand. I go back in time and I tell young Kevin Smith, "Oh, we used to live in Hollywood. We don't anymore because you did it already." That boy would slap the taste out of my mouth. That boy's gone. He's dead. No, he's not. He he's vanished. still right here in my heart. Well, you tell him to he calm like, down. Like and Ben's green baby bean. teeth are still in his mouth. <laughs> Baby Kev is still in my heart. He'll never go away. He's not in the sink of some house I abandoned because I've got three like you. I have one home. That's all you need, Pete. I'm Pete Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's fantastic. You deserve to be way... You deserve two homes. You were going to say way more famous than I I was going to say way richer, but I, I broke it down. I know you're rich because you already got two fucking houses. You salty You deserve dog. to have that's... more homes than that. A home... In every state for you, in good every sir. state. So you a and wick, a wit that quick <laughs> deserves multiple residences. Razor where sharp. do you? So where in all your fucking houses? What is your home state? Where do you file your taxes? California. Oh hi. Yeah, the Cal state of California. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same state. Um, no way. It's the this California. state gets weirder the more you travel up and down it, right? <laughs> like it ain't the same all over the place. This state has all the Lukes, if you will. Lukes? Yeah. All the, the different Luke Skywalkers? All the different Lukes and all, all right. the different feelings. Is that a thing? Lukes? Yeah, yeah like people say gap. like. <laughs> it's a thing. It's an Which old Luke? thing. Which Luke are you? Uh, the Hollywood Luke. That's where we live. We live like right in the Hollywood Hills. I know that. It's quiet up there though. You would think it'd be loud, especially because we live kind of above like Hollywood Boulevard, like Franklin and Hollywood Boulevard, but we don't hear shit, man. I see Runyon Canyon. It's pretty. I walk it all the time. I say hike, but you've been there. So unless you take the stairs. It's a mild one. Yeah, it's just... It's well, don't say... One. Don't fucking it's steal mild. my thunder. If it was a salsa. There are some people on the other side of the country who are like, he hikes that Runyon every day. It must yeah. hurt. Runyon, and you're telling them it's mild and shit. Runyon sounds like a serious canyon. It does, right? More like Sunterton. It's more like walk-in for walk -in. me. Walk-in. Yeah. <laughs> we can't be <laughs> the first to say that. Will. Tell me about your process. Uh, if you want to write... My prostate? It's way deep, man. If you want to go for it, go you gotta ahead. You got to get a long I don't think your fingers are long enough, Pete. My last doctor had those thick ones. Dr. Periodontist. Periodontist. Yeah. And my, my current one, Slender, which I'm, I'm more of a fan of. Slender fingers? No, I'm wondering. Slender man. Slender man is my doctor. He's the killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but a terrifying he's, he's like, experience. Look, he's scary, but he's good with my ass. Like the only time he's not scary is when he has to deal with my ass. I'm oddly enough not scared of him. If man. I'm going to get a prostate exam from a horror character. Which one? Slender man. I don't want it from Kruger. Never. Well, and I, Jason's I mean, that got those that thick cabbage hands. And also, let's be fair, he died as a boy, so he didn't get an education. Jason? Yeah, like you're going to trust a 10-year-old to fucking look at your ass and, and look for ass cancer? No way, man. Did you do weird stuff like that when you were a kid in the streets of look Jersey? Look for ass cancer? Looking at in each the streets other's of asses? Jersey? And lift up cans and be like, are you there? Actually, here's a better question. Yes. People are aware that you made sketches when you were in high school. Some people are aware. Some the people. way you talk about it, you'd think I was Ben Affleck and shit. <laughs> you know, I watch Ben Affleck's like drunk driving. I was such a, I am such a fan that I've seen like his first film. Voyage of the Mimi, the TV show that he used to do for PBS. Oh, I haven't seen that. He was a children's TV star before anything else. So really? he was a guy, a little kid who lived on a boat, a tugboat that would go up and down like fucking Massachusetts shore. And he'd stop and people would be like, you know, today we're going to show you a diamond tooth gang saw. And he'd say shit like a diamond tooth gang saw. Like and repeat it back. Benny F? Yeah. So when I met him, he was an industry veteran. Wow. Like day, day one of Mall Rats, we're doing a pre-production day where you try to shoot something, get ahead of schedule and shit. And we're shooting the scene where um, Shannon Hamilton, that's who Ben plays, is, is having sex with Trish the Dish, the video that plays at the end of the movie, right? So we shoot that in this like fucking apartment in Minnesota. And then we wrap. It's only like a two hour shoot and shit. We're like that's a wrap. This is my first movie after Clerks. So I start wrapping up cable and grabbing shit. And Affleck comes over. He goes, you don't do that here. Really? He yeah. had to tell you that you didn't have to do it anymore. Because he was the one with experience. Wow. And I was just like, well, I like to help. And he goes, it's against the rules. Yeah, it is. They'll get mad at you. They'll Stop get, it. Yeah, don't try to help. So he was helpful. He was helpful, Hannah, early on. Day yeah. one of the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is baby teeth Affleck. And fuck, and, and then he said funny things, and I laughed as well. He didn't make me feel like a dick where I'm like, oh, I'm an ignorant. Like he said, he told me the thing, and then he said something funny, which I can't remember, but it made me laugh. And I was like, I like this kid. I'm interested in, you've done I said, one day I'm going to defend this kid on a podcast. Who, to, Ben? To a real estate magnate who's got more homes than fucking, 
you could shake a stick at. Who thinks he's better than a guy because he had a little teeth work done, done back in the day? I did add uh, orthotics <laughs> for my feet. <laughs> um, can, you, I, can I be frank with you? I yeah. know you're like, oh, he's fucking stoned and shit like that. But I don't get stoned. I just get stand, centered. I'm, a, I'm an old man. You don't get, you know, I'm not in high school anymore, Pete. But I will be honest with you. Mm. I'll, be, I'll be as candid as I possibly can. And I will allow that weed allows for more candor. More candor weed. This is a good ass fucking time. Yeah, yeah, I'm having a great time. Oh my God, I would do this every day. If you were like, look, I need a podcast partner, I'd be like, I'll fucking Aww, do this Oh, that's every awesome. Day. Thanks, man. That's high praise. The fact that you didn't just jump on that offer, though, really fucking hurts my feelings. You just like, <laughs> I praised like it. A and you're about to like move on as opposed to like, we should fucking do that. Look over there. What do you see? <laughs> liquid death? No, not water? liquid death. Oh, I was supposed to offer you a liquid death. That Batman yeah, painting? painting? Yeah, the Batman painting. Um, I'm trying to show you. Is uh, it a painting or a panel from year one? It's a panel from year one. And is it just blown up or something? I just like blew it up. Um, I'm you just like showing Batman, it to you so you? we're friends. Thank you so much. Yeah, have you ever seen. I'm sorry, what's happening right now? I'm smiling because I'm like, you like Batman, do you? Is it oh, because world? everyone likes Batman. No, everyone knows that you fucking like Batman. Oh, you are aware that I do Batman. Pete. Look, I don't know. You think, you think I live I'm gonna in the come over to some fucking farm country strangers that house I'm show business. without looking them up, looking them up on the internets and stuff? But yeah, I'd be, the moment they said, "Oh, Pete Holmes wants you to be on," I was like, "I'll do that." He does funny Batman. Ah, Batman is what we call them to make it more Googleable. What do you call it? Googleable. But what did you call it? Badman. Batman. That's what you, you search put Batman, the name and nothing it? comes in. You type in Batman. That makes sense. I would have went for funny Batman. Funny Batman will get you there, but a lot of people go for Funny Batman. Where do you stand on Batman? Is he not really your thing? Because you seem like a real comic guy. Um, so, so apparently like you, you would... did no research on me. I no, I know you like Batman. I'm just wondering. called Fat Man on Batman. Okay. Which became Fat Man Beyond. Um, I'm I guess... a huge Batman fan. Um, okay, good. Absolutely adore the character. Um, although I'll be honest with you, the first time that I was ever like, huh, this is can be perceived as silly, was in the recent The Batman movie. Uh, yeah, tell me why. Um, because they, they, lately they've been like, this is the most realistic fucking Batman ever. This is what Batman would be like in the real world. And they keep forgetting that it's like, it's not supposed to be the real No, world. there's a fantasy element here. And like the more realistic you make this shit, yes. the more it starts to like literally fall apart. Like Kevin, for example- I can't believe you're just pulling a thought right from I, my here, brain. Case in point, I watched, you watch Reacher on Amazon? I watched Reacher on Amazon. Reacher is Batman without the mask. Speed agree. So as I watch <laughs> the Batman, yes. and they're desperately trying to make it real, and this is no criticism. I love Matt Reeves, and the movie is is well. I don't care for Matt watchable. Reeves, and I don't care for. I'm just kidding. Holy <laughs> shit! Well, I'm out of here. I don't know who Matt Reeves is. He's he a guy that he made the fucking Planet of the Apes remakes. I was 100 percent J.K. Matthew. You're welcome on the show anytime. But I, I just want to be funny. He he like he made a wonderful film. Don't get me wrong, but because they're all obsessed since Chris Nolan with like. Make it real, man. Make it real. It's like, yeah. then you watch Reacher, and then you're like, all right, well, he's Batman without a mask. And then you watch the Batman, and you're like, why is he wearing that mask? Like, this is silly. Like, Oh, you're right. You can get everything done. Like, just, just go around beating the shit out of people like Reacher. Right. And fucking, if you don't want to kill him, don't kill him. But, like, you know, it was the first time where I stumbled into the suit where I was like, oh, this is meant for fucking fun. Like, yeah, shouldn't do this in a fucking I, real world. And the more real they make these movies, the more, the more apparent I think that becomes. You need like, like Tim Burton was the guy, where you take a character and you fucking like, look at the, the fucking penguin. There's a penguin shooting a missile at Batman. Like, I'm not saying it should all be Michael Keaton. Believe me, I love the Chris Nolan stuff as well. But the drive to make it as realistic as possible does not help that character, I feel, mm -hmm. for me personally. Well, I thought you were going to pull it really out of my brain. As soon as Batman is walking around a crime scene with a bunch of cops, which I understand he does in the comic books. I'll go for that. that, I, that I, I, that's when I, I was like, this is silly. I'll even go for that. You what, will go for it. I'll even go for that. What, what really bugged me this time around, not bugged me, but like it was clear that Matt Reeves was like, I'm going to make like a fucking down and dirty Batman detective movie. And he did. 
and it was effective. And then it was clear that the studio was like, hey man, this is a superhero movie. He got to do something super heroic. And then all of a sudden there's a third act where a flood happens and shit like that, mm -hmm. which was completely like, where'd that come from? Mm -hmm. it, it felt like two movies competing within them. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, again, I liked it. I, was, I didn't dislike it, but it was the first time that I bumped into the costume where I was like, you know, you could be far more effective without, without walking the around yeah. with Jack Reacher's I always bump on how great his hair looks. I'm like, this is a Reacher. hobo. He's a drifter. I love how this motherfucker just killed people. And like, they'd put him in jail and they'd have to let him out because they're like, ooh, Reacher, you incorrigible fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's and like, how'd he go? Is. Like, this guy fucking didn't pay for any yeah. of his crimes. Yeah, it was yeah, amazing. yeah. Yeah. I, I, what was I going to tell you I didn't like about Batman? I'm sort of blanking on it. It doesn't matter. And again, I want to make it clear so I don't want to get fucking roasted on the internet that I liked the Batman. But it's the not first time in my 52 years where I was like, I could have used him punching people in the face a little bit more. Would you agree Always. that the first seven minutes promised a movie that wasn't given to us? What happened in the first seven minutes? The first seven minutes, it's like, I am a gargoyle. I'm vengeance. And, and then he goes into the, the Joker gang and kicks the living shit out of one of the guys. And you're like, oh, my God, this is not your grandfather's father's Batman. And then that's the only guy he ever punches. I, I hate to right? sound like I'm like just looking for violence, but I do. But part one of the, the things of I like, yes, is the, is, is the primal release of, and the decisiveness. There's yes. the bad guy. I'm going to go after him. Yes. It's the same thing as Mission Impossible. And I'm movies. going to make the bad man pay. Yeah, I'm going to. Because that's at the root of Batman is a broken little boy who watches parents die. Yeah, and just wants to punish the people who did it forever and ever. Make it, you know, uh, clearly stop it from happening to others. That's the noble approach. But really just fucking punish them yeah. over and over for, for being bad so they will stop. It. Yeah, yeah. Is he your favorite soup here? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I get, you know, I did know you liked him. I was just a little worried that you were going to out-nerd me, that I was like, I like Batman, and that's so mm -hmm. obvious. Mm -hmm. But you're I got, totally I got a little dick, so I'm not competitive Teeny at little? All. Yeah, oh, yeah. But it gets the job done. I got a child, and my wife's been with me for Is that the job? Years. Yeah, that's the job, they tell me. <laughs> Um, but but the wife hasn't left. She was never like you, teeny dick, fucking loser. So it must work on some level. But because of that, work. I don't feel the need to be competitive with anybody. So if you wanted to out nerd me, I'd be like, have it. Wait, is that how you are in social situations? Oh god, yeah. I'm you not just confrontational yield? at all. I'm just like, yeah. But when do you come to life? Clearly, one on one conversations. I mean, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm I don't come to life in the other way too. I don't have to be combative to come to life. Well, this is actually, that's a, that's a good point, but you're, so you seem like an enthusiastic person. I you write very comics, so. you direct movies, very I think you have so. to really love passion. what you're doing. All about the passion. How do you do with your passion? How do you regenerate it? What happened, how does it feel when you lose it? Oh, have well, you ever lost it in the middle of a project? What an interesting question. Um, that, there was time where I was like, I'm done with films, I'm gonna retire. And I didn't make movies for three years. And then I did a podcast, uh, episode 259 of, of Smodcast, The Walrus and the Carpenter, where me and Scott Mosier, my podcast partner on the show back then, uh, did the story about this uh, walrus thing that we read. And that became Tusk. The Craigslist. Fire, yeah. Well, See? it wasn't Craigslist. It was, uh, it was Gumtree.uk, okay, which is their out. version of Craigslist. But right. you're close. I feel like we could have let that go. Nah. I wanted to it be was a bit on, pedantic. It was on Nigel's list. I just wanted to be a bit pedantic, and I feel <laughs> that's my right as the guest. Um, so in any event, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, yeah. that podcast sparked my imagination like to want to make that as a movie, and that kind of brought me back to film. And did that feel like coming home? It did, and I haven't left ever since. And, and again, like remember before I was like, I, if I could go back in time, if I went back in time and told the young me, like that, hey, one day we stop making movies just because you don't want to do it anymore. That kid would be like, what? It's interesting. Why? Like, that kid could think of nothing that he wanted more. And to know that one day, like, he was, he had the opportunity, the means to do it, and he just chose not to, would break his heart. So that's come up twice. You, you, not a bad beholden, but you're beholden to the you. Honoring the journey of that's, yeah. that was started by the young Kevin Smith? Yeah, he fascinates me. Like, I don't know where he got the fucking confidence to think he could 
pull anything off, let alone any of this, let alone the one thing he thought he wanted to do, which was to see clerks and stuff. But like, I'm thankful to him. What every drew? What day. drove him to do the first one to raise twenty six thousand? He didn't even raise it. He put it on credit cards. He had a bunch of credit cards. I heard he you sold your comic books. He did, but that was to pay the bare minimums on the credit cards and shit. Oh, so wow. There was no real hardcore money in the movie. There was like, uh, my mom and dad gave me their entire life savings, three grand, so we can rent the equipment because they did not take credit cards, the rental equipment company. And how did you pitch that to them? Um, I didn't cost them that much money. I hadn't really tried to go to college like my brother and sister. Like I dropped out after one year in, at uh, the Eugene Lang, one semester at Eugene Lang, which is part of the new school for social research. And then I went to the Brookdale Community College, so it was like fucking cheap. So they got off like really financially light with me, and I still lived at home. Did you explain that to them at that age? Were you like, "Look, I haven't cost as much as my no, brother and they, sister." They actually said it to me. Really? Yeah, I hadn't thought about it. I didn't think. I don't really think in terms of economics, so it never occurred to me that I was cheap, the cheapest child. Yeah. But when they put it like that, when I was like, "I want to go to film school," like, and it was an accident. The whole thing was a fucking accident because I was working at Quick Stop. I was reading the Village Voice every week. I love the Village Voice, and in it, I saw an ad. looked like a film strip on the side of the right-hand side of the fold in the film in the arts section, and uh, it was for the Vancouver Film School and had a one eight hundred number that you just call up and get like the package. And I was like, one eight hundred number? I can call from the fucking payphone right here at the store. So I called up and I got the package, and they sent it to my house, and I filled it out and shit. They didn't even ask for a reel, but like you wrote an essay. And then, like, a month later, I got accepted, and I was like, holy shit, they recognize from my words that I'm a fucking filmmaker in training. Turns out they just take everybody and shit. So we were <laughs> class 25, and uh, I sat my parents down to tell them, like, I'm, I'm going to go to film school. I'm going to go to the Vancouver Film School. And I'd never talked about this shit. Like, you know, I talked about liking movies, but didn't really talk about, like, wanting to be a filmmaker and stuff. And so I'd never finished anything. My parents like kind of knew me as the one that would start a thing, not finish it, and then just wind up back home and stuff. So I sat him down to be like, I'm gonna go to film school, uh, the Vancouver Film School. I wrote uh, an essay and they accepted me. So in February, I'm gonna go to Vancouver and um, I'm gonna learn to make a movie, come back and make a film. And my mom goes, um, Vancouver? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, Tiger, that's so far away. And I was like, it's not that far, Ma. It's like you go to New York and then Massachusetts and Maine and Vancouver, I think. Maybe Maine's above Vancouver. I was like, but it's right before Canada. And my mom's like, Vermont. And I was like, what? She's like, you're talking about Vermont. That's the V that you're thinking. I said, then where's Vancouver in America? She's like, it's not. It's in Canada. It's on the other side of the country. And yeah. I was like, I applied to a film school in fucking Canada. No wonder they had letters in the zip code. So, uh, you know, she was like, you still want to do this? And I was like, I, I do. I feel like I need to, I said, I, I'm late. Like, I was 21 at this point. I was like, I didn't go to, like, NYU or Tisch or anything. I was like, those are expensive four-year schools, They're like 40K a year. I said, this school's only, like, nine grand. They teach you everything in eight months. You get to go home and make a movie and stuff. And so mm -hmm. my parents were like, it didn't cost us. They literally said, my mom was like, you were, you were the least expensive child. Um, the, the other four, the other two, rather, went to four years of school apiece. And they had some financial aid packages, but some of the money had to come from my parents. My parents were fucking poor. We came from a poor family. My mother hates when I talk about this. Uh, it embarrasses her. But she's like, just say we were lower, 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 lower middle class. But I'm like, ma, that is poor. <laughs> um, so we were, like, not a family of means. That's why still to this day my mother, aside from loving me as the baby of the family of the three kids, thinks I'm a genius and a rock star because like fucking I went from where we were to like where I am and shit. Mm. And she's, I just talked to her earlier today and she my, she never fails to take five minutes to tell me how special that I am and not because I was born but because of what I accomplished. That's I mean she, she thinks I'm special because I was born but yeah. she's specifically talking about she's a big Kevin Smith fan maybe second only to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you a good self lover? Oh, fuck yes. Tell I me get. everything. I love it. I, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. I'm not one of those people who's just like, uh, fucking, I, I'm big on my stuff. You have to be to keep going. Well, this goes back to my question. How do you maintain the enthusiasm? But you're, you seem to be. Because I get to do a thing. Like, it's, you know, I know how many people want to do the thing that I do. And I get to do it. And I, not only do I get to do it, but I get to do the exact fucking version of it I, that I want, which is like me centric. A lot of people, like, you know, if they're lucky enough to get in this business, have to work for some other asshole and fucking tell some other asshole's story. I get up every morning, and I'm like, what do I want to do? What would be fun for me? 
Mm-hmm. Because that will be my job for the next few And months. is it a conscious mental effort to go like, don't forget, this is the dream? Or you just, the work reminds you that it's the Constantly. dream? Every day I wake up, it's just like, oh my God. Like I keep, you know, the fear is that I wake up one day and that was all a dream. Um, but every day I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I fucking live in a house that looks like a museum. It's my, I'm, my face is everywhere and all these things that we've done. Like every day I walk out of my room and I walk past these gigantic prints of me and Jason Mewes getting our footprints in the in the cement at Grumman's Chinese Theater. Yeah, those and have been filled in, but yeah. Get it, they haven't, Pete, they're there. <laughs> yeah, I won't even joke about it. You see how deadly serious I got? <laughs> That is the, honestly, of everything I've done in my entire career, the thing I'm most Those proud of. Do you know how many people get into the fucking courtyard of the Grumman's Chinese Theater? Tell me. Lot, not many. A lot of motherfuckers get stars on the Walk of Fame and shit like that. Yeah. The select few that get into the courtyard have to be super fucking well-known, and me and Jason Mewes somehow made it in. Wow. That is a magic trick. Well, you guys are, it's iconic. It's one of the craziest who knew? things. Who, yeah, knew? who knew? We who were knew? just like, to me, we were just the also-ran version of Cheech and Chong, Bob and Doug, and Bill and yeah. Ted. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why. I didn't know kids like Jay and Silent Bob, but I did. You know what I mean? When I saw you didn't them, know they, people like that in real life. Like, I did. Or you didn't know that people liked Jay and Silent Bob as a movie thing. No, no, no. I, I kind of. I was like, I think kids. you're being obtuse. I think you did know that. Pete. I love your words. <laughs> obtuse. <laughs> you used another big one earlier. <laughs> but like, you reminded me of the weird kids at church. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, what? I didn't do. I was not an ill-behaved kid. I wasn't like class clown or anything like that. No, I'm talking about Jay and Silent Bob. There, there were like there were the trench coat kids in our youth group that were like kind of like weren't into it. Were you, did you go to church? Were, yeah, church we're like at, I'm a big church guy. Yeah. Are you still to this day? No, no. I grew up super in the church. What and what church did you go? You're up doing in? that thing. Well, I mean, I you like can't it. just fucking drop like that and expect well, me to I, roll I think, over it. Oh well. What sure. kind of church? Like I said, Regular. Catholic before. What's regular? <laughs> it's a joke. It means Protestant. You were Protestant? Evangelical, yeah. So you were like from a waspy family. Yeah, White yeah, yeah. Anglo-Saxon. It's funny that you said that. I just Protestant. talked today about how waspy my mother is just this morning. Is she waspy like the traditional? Yeah, they're just kind of snobby, Boston. I love them to death, but they're, they so are pretty from, waspy. Where from where? Massachusetts? Boston, yeah. Is that Lexington, where you grew up? Lexington, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. fucking. How mm-hmm. far from Cambridge is that? About an Ohio, half an Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> uh, but actually, that's one of the things we are. You're always, a mass hole. That's yeah. where you come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't play like one. Oh, thanks, There's man. There's no fucking. That's why I have to say Boston because if I say Lexington, they think uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, like, oh, fucking, yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> I've never gotten that before. But because yeah. I don't like horse people. Let's fuck them. No horse, horse wants to be ridden. Yeah, it's Lexington, Kentucky. Is all about fucking horses. Oh. And no horse has ever said, "Get on my fucking back." Then what's that gap for? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. Man is supposed all to ride took. horse. <laughs> Tell me about, you were raised Catholic. Where yes. are you now? Because this is one of the in things. In the faith? In. Out of it. Look, for, I used to no, practice. Hold on. Let's make sure. And then I got good at it and I stopped. There, that's very good. It's an old joke. It's I'm going to write you a check for $3. <laughs> and I love that. But don't, don't cash <laughs> that's it. That's for the kids in the hall. Don't cash it until Friday. Uh, I bought a second house. Um, I... Uh, <laughs> third house i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> no and let's i uh, this i office. honestly i admire religious people let's re- yes uh, because um i remember how uh, beautiful and simple life was when i believed 100 percent that there was a heaven and god made me and jesus was his son and fucking mary was his mom and there are angels and they once fought the devils and, and one time one Lord, they fought angels that became and devils and, and all that it's shit. It's not enough for me to believe. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's like, I, I like when people are into that. Like, um, you know, I don't like it when they're into the, to the point where they're like, and so I want to take away your ability to have an abortion. Obviously sure. I can't stand those people, but I like the people who are like, of course there's a God. Cause I used to be one of those people and it was a beautiful way to be. Yeah. And you know, Unfortunately, I got educated to the point where, and I'm not saying those people are not educated, but I personally received too much information that pointed to the, you know, opposite. To point it, I, one day I was like, you know, we, we laugh at the fucking Greeks and the Romans for all their multiple gods. Like yeah. all the time I was a kid in school, we'd be like doing Greek mythology and be like, this is, I fucking believe these things, this is ridiculous. There's only one God. And then, like, one day I was just like, one day somebody could be laughing at us going, like, can you believe they even believed in the notion of I have of a, a bit about this that god? I think you'd like. Do you really? It's like Thor was a real god. Yeah. And now he's an Avenger. Yes. That would be like in 2,000 years we're watching a movie and Jesus with his cross of mercy comes through the wall <laughs> with a talking raccoon. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like Kool-Aid style. Exactly. That's, you, no, that's that, a good bit That's right a there. nice deconstruction. 
I do up? a little, there's a little, uh oh, what happened? <laughs> well, Katie, when going you're on recording a podcast and you go, oh shit, and scramble, it, look, I'm like, don't no come one's down been on recorded. her. You're the motherfucker who pulled her phone out in the middle of a really deep you conversation what, to see if Judd Apatow was blowing it you up. It wasn't Judd Apatow. I know it wasn't. And that's why you were so disappointed. I saw you put the phone back in, like, so dejected, like, he, will he ever text? Pardon the interruption, weirdos. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Magic Spoon Cereal. For those of you watching the uh, video here on YouTube, I'm holding up the box. This wizard here on the on the box of Magic Spoon, I always think looks like Duncan Trussell riding some sort of fevered bunny. Growing up, <laughs> fevered bunny. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid, but I had to give it up. Obviously, we all have to give it up because I realized it was full of sugar and junk that you really shouldn't eat. But introducing Magic Spoon cereal. They are here to fix all of that, which means they are recreating the flavors that we love from those cereals that were terrible for us. Grain-free, zero gram total sugar, four gram net carbs, 13 grams of protein, and this is the frosted flavor, which is my favorite. Uh, we give it to Lila. We tell her it's marshmallow flavor because it tastes like marshmallow to me. It is incredible. That's one of the best things about Magic Spoon is not only do I love it, I eat it often after workouts because it is high protein, but I also can give it to Lila and know that I'm giving her something that's not full of junk and terrible, terrible stuff. I recommend the variety pack. The four flavors are cocoa, fruity. The fruity is really, really, really on the nose with the throwback taste. Frosted, which I just showed, and peanut butter, which has a little bit more protein, which I like a lot. This pack has zero grams of sugar, between 11 and 13 grams of protein, and only four grams of net carbs, and it's only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low carb, but they are incredible, incredible tasting. In fact, they're just, without all of these added health benefits, like not, you know, meaning not full of crap, they are the best tasting cereals I have had. And you can make your own flavors, like mixing cocoa with peanut butter, tastes like a peanut butter cup, and mixing uh, the frosted, which I said, tastes uh, like marshmallow with chocolate. We're getting kind of in a s'more zone. It tastes exactly like re regular cereal from your childhood, but is super nutritious. It's delicious, but super healthy cereal that brings real joy to your mornings or your afternoons, or frankly, I literally had it for dinner tonight. So go to magicspoon.com slash Pete to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use promo code Pete at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash Pete and use code Pete to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. And our next partner is a product that I literally use every single day, every morning, and sometimes in the afternoon as well. I take Athletic Greens AG1 because I wanted, I didn't have time always to make some sort of from the garden, from the roots up, blended 45 minute smoothie. And I wanted more energy. I wanted better gut health. I wanted an optimized immune system. And I had heard so much about Athletic Greens from other podcasts. I've been using it for months now and I absolutely love it. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75, 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients, probiotics and adaptogens. You guys know I'm obsessed with adaptogens, which sort of round the edges and help us cope with stress to help you start your day right. And this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, and aging. That's literally all of the things. I take it in the morning. Sometimes I add it to a smoothie if I'm making something with like a little bit of oat milk or some berries, throw it in there for that whole body nutrition, get all of that support that I'm talking about. But the best thing is that AG1 is good enough to take in just water. I don't know any other health supplement that is this good and this healthy that actually tastes good. It's a little bit sweet. There's nothing like 
grassy about it. Let's be honest. Most of these, a lot of these products can taste like freshly mown grass. Athletic Greens has a pleasant, almost tropical taste that I literally look forward to taking it every single morning. I even sneak a little bit to Leela and Val, who does not like stuff like this. She does not mind the taste at all. I've even come to bringing uh, AG1 with me when I travel because a lot of times on the road, it is so hard to get the nutrients that my body needs, that my body craves and needs to function at its optimal level. And uh, AG1 absolutely ticks every single box. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial uh, anything while still tasting good. And AG1 is the small micro habit with huge, big benefits. It's the one thing you can do for yourself every single day to take great care of yourself. It costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. And they have over 7,000 five-star reviews. Athletic Greens is absolutely crushing it. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, just like I do. It's one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. I swear there's nothing else like it on the market that you can add to just water and it's a pleasure to drink. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-boosting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Pete. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Pete to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for supporting my body and for supporting this podcast. All right, everybody, let's get back to Kevin Smith. That is, you know, it's funny, it was a phone call from my friend who just had a meeting with Jed Apatow. I thought you said it was the Judd Apatow of your personal life. I was making sure it wasn't Valerie the Judd Apatow of my personal life. What were we about to say before Katie had an aneurysm? I don't know, but I was worried. I was really worried. Okay, so religion. Oh, I was saying that was a good deconstructionist point. That the, the oh, the, the in w- Clerks Three, there's a little bit about Thor. And, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't steal it. No, I know you didn't steal it. it was, I it's such a comic it. thing to do to come out and be like, I, I, I was doing it first. I did it first. Yeah. Where are you? It's so at? weird that we both heard of Thor. <laughs> And, re- and uh, it's that he used it. to be a real god. Yes. Where are you at now? Not religion, but yeah. with 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 awareness, with the fact that you and I are on a planet and we're in outer space and we're alive. What what kind of fully aware of all of those things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like you are aware. There's something in you that is aware. Yes. You possess the quality of awareness. Yes. Do you have any mythology or framework or uh, no story? Uh, here, well, I mean, you, you, we, I just did the Steve O podcast. We talked about it. it's not necessarily my theory, but. Uh, on Smodcast years ago, me and Mosier were talking. That was when I was still pretty, you know, Catholic in heart, even if I didn't go to church and stuff, still believe in God and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I was having one of those moments like, come on, Mosier, like, you don't believe in heaven? Like, what the fuck do you think happens after we die? And he's like, I understand why you believe in heaven because you believe you're important. You believe that everything you say has to be heard. And you believe that, like, you couldn't possibly just end. I'm like, yes. I have all this fucking information. Like, where would it just go? It'd be a waste of time. And Scott's like, you know what has a lot of information? A laptop. It's like a laptop is packed with information. And then one day it just spins down and that's it. What happens to all that information? It was so precious. It was so important. It's probably still trapped there and then it eventually deteriorates and <laughs> yeah, goes away. To He's go like, to- it's your ego that makes you think. I agree. There's a You have to go someplace else. He's like, you get this and that's it. That was his whole thing. But the thought that you, the contents of your brain carry over into some afterlife, <clears throat> I wouldn't, I don't subscribe to that per se. Um, Which is a shame because that's what we could all understand is taking shit with us. Yeah, like we well, can't I get think our heads is, around whatever is it really is trip. because it is beyond us. Well, beyond Thomas Merton has a great line, good Catholic boy, Trappist. He says, um, I don't know what to tell you about heaven, but all I know is there won't be much of you there. Like you, it won't be Kevin Smith, the separate entity, Ugh. this trip. Don't fucking ruin my day. I'm not going to be in heaven. No, no, no. I'm saying this version of me is not going to be heaven. The story why would you want to bring all of your information with you? Let me ask you this. 
Dude, how I, long? I worked hard to become Kevin Smith, and oh, for it to man. end in one lifetime what a is egregious. To me, to it is, who? It's 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 repugnant that it just stops. I don't get to carry this into some sort of fucking let sequel. Me, well, let me I ask work you this. in the movie business. Let there's me, no end. Let, let me as ask long you this. as there's money to be made, we keep going. <laughs> how long? How many millennia yeah. could you hold on to this information that you that you've acquired that I was to Kevin make Smith? it worthwhile? That like fucking Jay and Silent Bob were a thing forever. Oh my god, I'd eat out. I'm still eating out on Clerks. I say the word Clerks. 28 times a day, Pete. You yeah. think I'd want to let go of my lifetime in some future lifetime because what? Something else happened? Yeah, Nothing but ever is cool how as many Clerks million, is ever going to happen to me again let's, in let's, any re lifetime. Really play it out. A okay. hundred million years. Do I get to make Clerks at least twice? Okay. Like there, like I, there's another lifetime where it's like, oh, you also made Clerks in this lifetime as well. I just wonder like, what quantity of time would would validate this feeling that a long amount of being Kevin Smith makes it meaningful. What I'm what I'm welcoming you to is the naked now, is what we could call it. Totally. Where you and I don't exist in the beautiful way, in the free way. You talk right. about when your mom passed away and yes. came back. When did I talk about that? On another on, podcast. On another podcast that we won't Is that mention. how we roll on these podcasts? How we, we talk roll? About Do you have to mention my canceled talked CBS about on sitcom? Other places? I don't know. If that's I didn't even fair. mention it. When did I mention you it? You accused me of doing no research, sir, and here I am quoting you on uh, other but podcasts. Fair enough, but if you're going to do that, you got to tell people why, because some people might be like, I don't remember him talking about that. In that's podcast. true. You Not everybody is as high as you are, but <laughs> true. I'm going to touch but, you but gently also, on your knee. Oh, it was your hand. It was, and that got weird and shit. But very, very dry, very dry. Very dry, dry foot, dry foot. If I, I mean, and it's feet too. Like some people got to think about that. Tar I don't. Tarantino. I don't I, Do you ever get embarrassed for a director where you're like, wow, we're really, not embarrassed, but like this is a lot of them. Like we're getting a lot, like Tarantino I loves feet. if you feet. look closely at every filmmaker's work, you get a lot of them, but yeah. it just turns out it's that true. Well, you dated uh, the young woman I'm playing, Julie? Joey Adams. Joey, for Chasing Amy. Yeah. And so that was literally you going like, this is what I find attractive and this is what I'm into and I put it but into my But also that movies. was literally going like, just like Clerks, which was not, you know, Clerks wasn't creative. That was me going, this is everything I do. I'm just going to change all the names. Yeah. Chasing Amy was like, well, this is my relationship. I'm just going to change all the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So forth and so on. Clerks I, 3, literally the same thing. I'm with you. When you come to new projects, I know you... you <laughs> that felt like a real closing thought. I'm with you. And then you wanted to jump to a new topic. Well, I was like, look at that pro. I, but a pro could, another pro sees the strings and shit like that. We can admire we can the craftsmanship admire. of another. Of another pro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, what really I to admire it, I should have waited off mic and been like, when you did that deft switch, but no, this is sometimes you got to shout it out because in the well, moment, it's happening. the listener, the watcher is not cognizant of the fact that you're as good at the job as you are. Sometimes oh, the guest this. has to point that out. Sometimes the Kevin Smith love becomes the Pete Holmes love. Yes. And that's a happy place for me. <laughs> yes. When your mom almost passed, she said that yeah. it was a beautiful... She, she, I don't know if she, she used the word the, spacious. You she tell saw it. the, you know, the, the river of dreams or whatever. Fuck, you know, she's floating like they all say they do and stuff. Not floating like we, but like floating down a river. And she saw like you know up ahead was dad and and, and my grandmother and whatnot. And then somebody was like, oh no, it's not time. And then she got sucked back and stuff. And I guess she was gone for like a minute or something. But that so she I asked didn't. Her, yeah, go ahead. I asked her afterwards, like you know, long after. We were talking one night, and I was like, all right, Ma, you, you've been dead and you've been alive. Which was better? And I, of course, expected her to be like, you know, oh, my God, this. But my mom was like, it was better on the other side. And I was like, are you serious? And she said, yeah, every piece of pressure I ever felt in life, all the stress, all my responsibility was just gone. Yeah. And for the first time in my life, I was, like, free, and I just felt weightless. It was amazing. So when I almost died on the table when I was having my heart attack and shit. The Thanksgiving table? I had a, the, which <laughs> The Thanksgiving table is Thanksgiving. what I said. I was sitting there carving the bird, and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Something feels bad. <laughs> you could have totally left. It's okay. It's totally, You've been the I do bits table. about it all the time. Yes, you can but have it was that one. quite a stretch to go from fucking like... <laughs> Operating table Thanksgiving day. It was adorable. That was like a Charlie Brown level joke. It was. It, really, it was something you could share. You think with I Schultz you? I think I you Schultz Schultz it. it. I Schultz it. did a little bit. Schultz it. When you almost died, um, I remember. <laughs> I remember thinking, "Look, there's only one turkey in this bucket." <laughs> um, I remember thinking, like, uh, at one point, I was like, "Oh my god, I get it. Like, this is 
life is like you you graduate. It's like high school graduation. You can't be there forever in high school. You have to matriculate and shit. And I don't know what's next, but this is done, and that's okay. Like that's natural and shit. So I was comfy with the idea. Well, see, but of these... dying, and I don't know if that's because my mom stuck that idea in my head because I too felt like, oh my god, like I'm off the hook. I don't have to do any of that shit anymore. I don't have to fucking like try to be relevant. I don't have to like fucking put new work out all the time and if, just in case people are like, oh, I forgot about him. I don't have to deal with like the pressure of does anybody care if I put out fucking new work? Am I, is the, you know, is the, the audience getting smaller because they're dying out or because I'm just becoming less relevant? All the shit that like one carries in life like was suddenly gone and I was like, oh my God, like this rocks. And then motherfucker saved me, Dr. Leidenheim. <laughs> And then I had to come back to it and get back in the human race. And you're like, all right. But that's why my question is, why would any heaven worth having be us continuing on this sort of nonsense of like, I'm Pete Hobbs, I'm important. Wouldn't you rather evaporate? You mean you don't even get your name in the afterlife? Evaporate but you spent into- so long building that name in You something. just told me how tiring it is maintaining the spinning plates. It, it is, but life is tiring sometimes. Doesn't and mean I don't like it. the afterlife is too? No, the afterlife is bliss. It's, that's it's where you, bliss, but you're fighting for relevance? That's where you get to talk. That's where you victory lap. The afterlife is where you get to sit around and be like, when we made Clerks, which is essentially what I've been doing for the You're last like, 29 years. You're confusing heaven with Florida. <laughs> a no, porch I've been, in Florida. I've been to Florida, We man. need a better divine imagination if we think heaven is me and you just going, when I was on the Pete Holmes show Let on TV, I'll be honest with Jesus you. And Jesus rollerblades by and goes, loved Clerks 3, <laughs> up that shot-for-shot shot remake with Thigh Gap. Up until the moment that you countered me, I thought the idea of heaven was sitting around and podcasting with you, but now I'm starting to question that. <laughs> now I'm remembering that Steve-O was a lot more welcoming and a lot <laughs> <No>. less judgy. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to find the the harmony between the idea that it's ex exhausting being Kevin and that heaven- But I didn't say it was exhausting being Kevin. I just said that sometimes, you know, like the race of I gotta stay, the part of the shit that comes with the job that has nothing to do with the job. Yes. Um, all the external uh, pressures that one creates probably for themselves in their own head as they're trying to gauge where they are in the business because there's no guidebook. Nobody sits you down and says, okay, this is where you are. You're over this person, but behind this person. This is, you know, it's not like high school exactly. Although in every other way it kind of is, <laughs> but no, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not exhausted by being Kevin Smith. I'm energized. But by the it. thought of your mom's river, where you drop it all, well, that doesn't sound where, like Kevin. Uh, the thought of like where I was, not having to worry about like anything, paying bills, like you know, I, I ain't bitching, but it's like I carry a lot of fucking mouths. It's not just mine, and it's not just like my wife and my kid. Like, I got a lot of businesses and a lot of people working for me, and they all, you know you're responsible for a lot. Like, mm -hmm. so even if you were interested in like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it anymore, you have to, because a lot of people are counting on you. Good thing I don't have an, an interest in not doing it. I'm a big fan of doing it and stuff. But it can get tiring, especially when like, you know, you have to deal with being judged constantly. Mm. It's not as simple as like, I'm gonna make a thing and it's fun. You know, we fucking live in a world where people are like, well, I think you think fucking sucks. How about that? And yeah. you're like, well, thanks. Oops. I am not that way. I'm not built that way. You'll never know what I don't like. I'll, you'll never hear yeah. me fucking crying about like, this movie fucking sucked. I'll spend my entire time telling you about the things I do like, but you'll never hear about the shit that bugs me. Why? Life is too short to waste time bitching. And I love the internet and have forever, man. It's, I've profited from it greatly. I've been on the net since like 1995 is when we put up the Viewski website. But lately it's a fucking horrible hellscape where there are just some people who just wake up and bitch. Like everything they fucking put out there in the world is negative. Mm. Everything is just like, this sucks, you're bad. These fuckers are doing this. When are we gonna... like? Fuckers aren't happy. It's crazy. They gave the world this communication device where you could do anything. You can express anything you want. You can be funny, like fuckers on TikToks, like, uh, like that motherfucker who like does all the Ikea TikToks with the mustache. He's fucking hysterical. Or you could be the person that wakes up every day and it's just like, they're wrong and we're right. Like there's some motherfuckers, man, that like wind up in my timeline. I don't even follow them, but some other motherfuckers post them because they're like, look at this asshole. And they are... Every fucking tweet 
is so some dire fucking negative horrible thing some offense that they're fucking feeling mm. and a single tweet like had coffee it was great mm. you know just so fucking shitty and fucking negative and stuff that stuff gets tiring i think that's you got to fucking circumnavigate all that crap i also man. think you attract it you know have you by seen, being positive yeah. which sucks like yeah. you would imagine i always try to tell the negative people it's just like you're doing it fucking wrong like if you hate my guts don't sit around bitching about how much i suck use that as fuel to do the thing you need to do because if i suck and you're superior to me clearly you can do what i do i should be encouraging to you not a fucking like somebody that you bash. Yeah. I should be your fucking lodestar because you're like, if this fucking backwards chimp has a career, then clearly there's going to be a place for me at the table. But instead, people are content backwards to just chimp. sit there and be like, oh, fuck him and fuck this and fuck those people. It's such a tremendous waste of their time and energy. Like the amount of time you sit around telling a motherfucker how much you hate shit and how this needs to be fucked and this needs to be fixed is time you could be creating something, creating something it's of your own that fosters a fucking living. I make a living out of being positive. Motherfuckers, I know there are some people who make a living out of being negative, but there are a bunch of motherfuckers who just be negative for fucking free. And it's like, you're doing it wrong, bitch. Mm. Like, this is a complete waste of your time. Do you wanna be me? Cause that's what I'm reading behind the lines here. You don't understand why I'm doing what I do, but you're not. The difference is, I'm not wasting my time like you bitching about why I don't got what I want. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there are things that I would like in this life that I don't have, but you'll never fucking hear about them. Because why? What a waste of fucking time that would be to tell you mm -hmm. what I don't have. Mm -hmm. When you could clearly look at me and be like, and yet you have too much. Mm -hmm. You have so much. But isn't it, it's a huge, first of all, lovely. I'm going to put. Sometimes we go real, Pete. Sometimes it's not just jokes Touch, just about one, fucking, Just one, just one, just one. It's not just periodontal <laughs> jokes. Sometimes it's. No, it's great. And obviously, mark the time, because that's fantastic. But Mark the time. Well, we put little that clips. That's cut a good out. clip. You're like, that's that's clip. We're going to take it out. <laughs> and any mention of Smodcast or the Joe Rogan experience. Because we're, we're trying to get your ear, ear balls over here. Do you have... Um, oh, I, I don't gotta, follow this sort of thing anymore because I stopped being competitive. And when I first started podcasting, like I used to pay attention to the charts and we were always at the top of them and shit. And I know that it's a different world now. And everybody has a podcast. But that all being said, do you pay attention to... I don't. I wouldn't even know how to check it. So you live blissfully going. I make it. I put it out there, and I don't give a fuck. Look, if my heaven, which we, I was trying to push you into, which now I see <laughs> right. how silly that was, is letting it all go. Right. Guess what, Kevin? We can let it go. So you don't. You don't moment. look at the numbers. No, let's Good do it for you. Let it right now. Just be complete. Well, it's I never beautiful. look at the numbers. No, I'm, I'm not telling you, you to not look at the numbers. I'm just saying, of course, I wouldn't do that to myself because I find the more I drop, the more I let go of yes. while still doing. Uh, look, there's a great what? prophet who once said, uh, Marcus Lemonis? No, it was Alanis Morissette. And she said, you, you know, you jump. What was the lyric? It's like you'd, she, Thank you, India. When she jumped off it, that's when she found it. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can let go of things. Yes. Let me ask you this, though. Like the, I'd love your... Is it the old, the monkey and the banana? It's like, oh. monkey puts his hand in the box and the banana's in the box and can't get out the hole because oh. it's too long and the monkey's like, ah! You just let the banana go, bro. Let the banana go? You're free. That's Homer holding onto the bag of... Uh, he has his arm in a vending machine and they go, Homer, are you holding onto the candy bar? He's like, yes. <laughs> Do you... Um, I love Old Simpsons because it was my religion back in the day. And, um, like, when people... Like, you know, I still refer like people meet me and they're like oh i talk like they use shit from my movies in their real life and it's touching because i know what that means because i still walk around yeah, and be like it's the greatest compliment everything's coming up millhouse i know and shit like i that. say that to my wife without any we don't even laugh i just go wow everything's coming up millhouse yeah. today same one <laughs> yes let me ask you this kev people who shit it sounds on things like, and i'm not this is not mm -hmm. i know i live in hollywood and okay. you live in Ohio, so I don't want this to come Can I across. have a, a strain of wheat to I don't, chew on? I, don't, well. I know you hayseeds don't understand this. I don't want this to be confused as Ted me. Ted Danson lives in Ohio. I don't want this to be confused <laughs> as me trying to get into a wife swapping thing, but it sounds yeah. like your wife and I would get along. Like, she would find me funny. Yeah, she would. If she finds you funny, I bet you she would find yeah, me yeah. funny. Yeah, I would love to. It's a good uh, thing that you guys met before I met her. You're saying you have a shot with I'm my Judd Apatow. I'm not saying shot, but it sounds like she <laughs> <laughs> your Judd Apatow. No, she was your, yeah, that's right. She's yes. the Judd Apatow of your personal life. Well, we, life. you would. Uh, I thought the Judd Apatow was the Judd Apatow of your personal life. He is. Actually, Judd, Judd uh, I have like five like true friends, and Judd is one of them. It has to be. You call him. He how answers. How you doing? Do his voice it's again. Sweet. Hey, do 
uh, could you please stop doing uh, an impression of me on the podcast? <laughs> because Iris really thinks it's terrible. It's Can like I tell you a Judd Apatow story? Um, I feel like we did a part. We did. I'm going to tell you whether you want it. <laughs> no, or not. I'm going to touch your knee. No, no, no. It's you're coming. the guest. It's coming hard. I do want to know it's why we hard. think people it's hate coming. It's You better close stuff. your eyes because it's coming right okay. in your face. The story. Here it comes. Santa Claus uh, we is did coming. a uh, panel at uh, I want to say 2008 uh, San Diego Comic Con. San Diego Comic Con. What, what? What is that? Oh my god! <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. You, you, you never mind a Batman short. Just yeah. make a series of Judge shorts. There bro. you go. Put on a fake beard and do that. That's adorable yeah. and funny. And yes. on point. I'm not, you think I'm joking. Well, this is me trying to work with you again. Just like remember before, I was like, we should buddy, do a podcast together. Doing, and you rolled doing, right the fuck over it. <laughs> well, we're doing new Where you're like, I already do a podcast, buddy. And Judd Apatow's involved. So fucking dot, dot, dot. Can I finish my fucking story, though? Yeah, of course. Why? why? Where? where <laughs> You're telling me about Judd Apatow. So anyway, I'm on stage. We're doing this panel, and it's me and Judd Apatow and Zack Snyder. Yes. Who was uh, coming out with Watchmen at that point, and Frank Miller. I actually have the Snyder Cut. Do you like it? I like that Snyder <laughs> Cut. It's it's way more intense. My hair moves it's in longer. slow motion. It's way longer. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I, I tell my barber to give me the Snyder Cut, I mean, don't cut anything. He just, give me the Snyder Cut. Just, just leave it as it is. He yeah. down. He's like, it's perfect. And, and walk away from me in it's slow motion. It's perfect, and here comes Dark Side. Yo, oh, my God. Um, so <laughs> after the panel, uh, we got off stage, and um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Judd Apatow is married to uh, Leslie... Man, Leslie Mann, yeah, a wonderful actress. Yes, um, she was backstage, and you know, I was on the panel with her husband. She was watching the panel, so she had to. She was forced to watch my performance as well. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> as I, 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 you probably don't suspect this, but I can be funny in a public setting. Yep. And so she came up to me after it was one of the highest compliments I've ever received in my life because she's married to a guy who does funny for a living. Yeah. And out of nowhere, unsolicited, I didn't come up to her to be like. You know, with puppy dog eyes, be like, what'd you think? She just came over to me and she's like, you're really fucking funny. Aww. And the fucking made all the difference. Well, nobody and says right then and there, I, I was also like, it's a good thing Judd Aptow met her first. There you are. Because funny is the way in. You're around scooping up rides. I'm, I'm just about, I just know that funny is the, is the way in. Is funny the way in for you or you got like a massive hog? What's your way in? Well, massive hog aside, <laughs> did you know an eclipse is act that's actually me? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a massive hog. That was me. That's just me at a urinal. That's, That's when you're erect. <laughs> so no, is it? Is oh, it, I haven't been erect in years. Is, but it, yeah. is it? It's got to be the Judd Apatow of your personal life is attracted to you because you're funny. Je oh, my lady, uh, yes. Val. Um, As you call her. She I'm just calling her by the in, honorific that you gave her. She grew up I would love to give her a name, but you completely Valerie, stripped her of Valerie, identity. I look like Val Kilmer, and her name is Val. That's how you can remember You it. do actually look yeah, a little bit is. like Val Kilmer. A little bit. I don't know if we needed that. Just give me the babe status. <laughs> give me full babe. Val grew up in the church, and better than that she likes that I'm funny, she likes that I'm silly. She grew up in the church, too? Yeah. So we bonded She's over a that heart. as well? I wouldn't call Val Waspy. No. Did she grow up in that church, Protestant church? She, her, she's a PK. Do you know what that is? Pastor's no. kid. She's a Louis PK. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this episode is. I'll do one of your sponsors. <laughs> you, you've earned it today. What's one of your promo codes? Magicspoon.com slash. Are you seriously? So she's a pastor's kid? Well, we bonded over that. That's so like, you first, and she's a fallen pastor's kid, right? Like she still don't believe in this shit. Fallen, yeah, meaning like you know, fucking he tore his he tore his fucking shirt at her. Like you've given up on the Lord. Well, Val and married I, a comic, it's moved actually, to Ohio, <laughs> moved to Hollywood at first. Uh, now that you're in Ohio, maybe she'll maybe her pastor father will accept her and you back. That's hilarious. Yes. Actually, I want I talk about God more than her family does. Is that uh, right? I love. Are you a believer? So you still believe? I'm spiritual, not religious. Which, which so I'm with you. I, and, and believe yeah, me, yeah. I'm I'm not but judging I'm in that, that in the least. No, I don't feel judged, and I love Ben Affleck, and nobody <laughs> needs to defend him. Where is baby teeth? B T A. Ba baby teeth Affleck. <laughs> B T A. Let me. I love BTA and his first Dude, film. He's, a, a, kid, a kid from fucking Cambridge would kick a kid from Lexington's ass, particularly no like Lexington, Kentucky. Well, Lexington, Mass, too. See, that's a good thing. The cool that you're kids from went Mass, to Ringe in Latin, different. which is where Ben went, but I went to Cambridge Friends School, which is the Quaker I'm sorry, School. It was called Cambridge, Cambridge Friends, Friends School. School. Yeah. Would you like to bully me now? <laughs> Not at all. Now I just feel take both I mics feel, to bully. I feel the knees. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I feel <laughs> if you're my life has bullied my you Quaker enough, school. Yeah, and no. I'm going to let that one just you lay there. Would have that is such low hanging fruit. Did you, you really go to a Quaker school? Speaking of my eclipse, did you eat a lot of oatmeal? 
Buddy, you're a fun treat. <laughs> <laughs> you would have loved Cambridge Friends School. I'm sure. Because they would have given you a camera and you would have been making movies when you were seven. Dude, I am mocking it. I'm yeah. jealous. I'm, no, no, no. I'm jelly. No, because you're a grown man. But when I, when we were little, going to Cambridge Friends School was a good embarrassing. Thing. It was but embarrassing? A lot Did of you have kids... to wear a uniform? No, no, it wasn't. See, like I that. wore a uniform for eight oh, really? years at OOPH. Batman? Our Lady of Perpetual Help. It was a Batman uniform. <laughs> I had uh, smoke grenades so I could disappear when I needed to, go from class to class. I'm, I'm picturing West. <laughs> I'd throw them down, then I'd run out of the classroom. But we can clearly see you. Um, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, OOPH. The public school kids called it Old Lady's Piss House oh, okay. and Old Lady's Poor House. I prefer piss house, but yeah. Well, you know, a little more trenchant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, trenchant, these good words. Um, these are bad and Affleck words, to be honest with you. Really? I'm just stealing from his Retainer. wedding speech. Retainer. <laughs> that's, that's when I knew he was hilarious. Oh, my God. We did a sketch. That is I'm gonna, genius. I'm going to tell you. That is one of my favorite moments in movie history. With the socks? He that because that is how that is Ben Affleck. Yes, right suspect. There. No, Every, I'm not. Yes. yes, suspect. Every movie should be him just Here allowed to, to do that. Here, the shit you pulled yes, today. Suspect. Here to four. You should speak to my attorney. It's fantastic. We, I did oh that God, whole that's monologue. Kids, for a, that's from Good Will Hunting. Go yeah, watch yeah, yeah. it. It's, it's really on VHS. Fun. You can find it in ben your Ben is the unsung hero of that movie. Unsung? Yeah, because Matt's- Chucky? Gets, Matt, Matt, Matt and Robin Williams get all the credit. All right. Ben's Chucky is the fucking movie. I'll, I'm going to throw Casey in the mix. Casey as well. Keep my antagonizing boy's wicked me. smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of me now? Yeah. Uh, I know everything about- I know everything about. It. I had an. Did L you Street watch as a, as a mass as a mass hole kid? I don't care for that, but yeah. Did you watch Good Will Hunting and be like, I should have been in that movie? No, I watched it. and I, That's when I realized I could be in Hollywood. Is that right? Yeah. So you were like, fuck it, I'm leaving this Quaker school. And the story, I ain't friends no well, more. I was in high school. It was. It came out in ninety six, ninety seven, ninety seven. And that's when I was a Late senior in high school. And me. Uh, is that right? I ran into Benny Aff At this is why he means so much to me. I saw him on the big screen. In Wuhan. How many times has he been on the podcast? Benny? Yeah. Zero. And he means that much to you. Yet I've been here like all day and fucking you won't even do a second podcast with me where I'm like, we should oh, do a podcast together. I thought you and were you're offering like, me. Anyway, moving on. I thought you were offering My a, wife might be calling. Is that Judd? I, you uh, are, you're a salty beef jerky. I'm going to Just I'm saying, gonna you're having such like a good time. Yeah. Obviously, you can tell it's a good thing I'm married because I'd be a pathetic, thirsty guy right who's just like oh my god i had such a good time with you no, we're having a good time we should I go out again you find the right people and you're kind of cool where you're like hey buddy i you know i have a good time with a lot of people i live I'm in an orange exclusive. orange grove i live in <laughs> ohio <laughs> <laughs> you live in an orange grove for a month you'll 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 be nice and that's smooth. true and smooth. um so i run into benny off at harvard square which is where i used to hang out and this is 1997 97 i worked at the movie theater okay i run into him Huge deal, yeah. huge deal. Yeah, yeah. I got his autograph. I had in my wallet. Uh, this is not, this is embarrassing, but you're a film guy. I am. I had ticket stub film of the trailer of Goodwill Hunting because I cut it out because I liked looking at frames of the movie. I feel you. And I showed it to him, and I still am grateful that he didn't go like this is a little weird for me. Well, he, he called the police. He initialed the the frame, and I, I kept it in my wallet. Where then, is it now? I wish I still had it. What, you got rid of it? I you got, got so famous at one point that you were like, I don't need this shit said, anymore. I'll keep I this. got my own HBO show. Ain't that right, Judd? Fuck Ben Affleck. I'm Ben Affleck now. I, I'm the Affleck now. I, I'm suspect. <laughs> I heard the story. That's the title of your third book. I'm, I'm suspect. suspect. Yes. Ter stories about how I always wanted to be Ben Affleck by Pete Holmes. And own mul multiple homes. <laughs> I heard the story that your mm -hmm. one of your girlfriends gave you a piece of paper that said Kevin Smith will never be a famous you writer. You heard that story incorrectly. Tell May me, I correct anything. you? Yeah. Uh, one of my ex girlfriend's mother gave me that note that said uh, Kevin Smith will never be a famous writer. He lacks the drive, but I do wish him well. <gasps> I have wow. it framed in my trophy case, surrounded by a bunch of film awards that I've. See, I know over that you kept stuff. Oh yeah. I we're not in my office oh, yeah. in. Oh, but I have some, <laughs> so I, I have some nice relics made. framed, and if I had that fr that those things of film, I would yeah. still have it. But cut to, I really wanted to tell you the story. Oh, you're talking about the Ben thing. You're the trying ben. to excuse away why you don't have it anymore. Well, I got jumped. I'm just kidding. That'd be amazing. Wouldn't that be great. Oh my god! You tried to give me tell, shit for losing it. I was like, I thought you were going to well, tell. Well, the like, Foot Clan beat me up. Yes, that'd They're be real. fantastic. And I'm like, oh my god. And if they, the Ninja Turtles aren't around, the Foot Clan is actually quite serious. Well, you got to carry pizza at all times. That's what I do. That's with what ice, calls with ice cream them. on it and anchovies. That's what calls them. I was such a hungry kid. 
I always wanted the novel. The, they tried to come up with pizza that was so gross. I was right. like, I'd eat that pizza. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's not, Sherbert that's not and orange sliced me. pizza. I was like, I'll fucking eat that right that's now. That's how you wind up living in an orange grove because <laughs> you love Sherbert. You're, you're, <laughs> you're a gift to humanity and I mean it. I run into Matt Damon at a party. Oh my God, all these name dropping stories. Yeah, I know you I'm know. so sorry that I mentioned Massachusetts. Listen to that. Right, done, done. I know you know him. <laughs> And I went up to Matt and I told him about a sketch I wanted to tell you that I shot called Goodwill Batman. And it was when Ben was announced to be Batman. Right. And we did a sketch where we superimposed right. me as Batman, my Batman, right. in Goodwill Hunting. Right. And I got to do, yes, I expect all that sort of stuff. It was a dream come true. Right. Smoking a cigarette, going like, being here is a waste of your time. Like right. that sort of stuff. Right. It's a dream come true. So I imagine the arrogance. I go up to Matt Damon to see if he's seen it. That's brilliant. Of course he hasn't. The not, highlight everyone, of, not everyone is Judd Apatow in this world. That's true. They don't follow every fucking thing you do. This is way before our Apatow too. Right? I shouldn't have even been at this party. It was a WME fancy pants party. What were you doing there? How'd I'm you get with in? WME. So you were a low-level WME. I was a low-level WME, WME, WME and there's high Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I would consider myself mid-level WME. Okay. How come I'm not at this party? I think you were. What party was this? I'll tell you whether I was there or not. It was a Christmas I've party? Ca I've counted all five parties I've ever attended in my 30 years in the business. It was a Christmas I've never w been to a Christmas party, so it's off the list. Okay. How did you get it in and I Christmas. did not? I don't know. I'm calling my agent after this. Who's your agent? I don't know. <laughs> Are kidding. you represented by management? Do you have yeah, a management company? Which company are you at? I don't know. The name of the company is, is always Jose? changing, but it's Dave Ralph. His company name changes constantly. Why? Because he's a tax dodge? He's a tax dodge, and <laughs> most of the time he calls me from South America. Like the number comes up, and there's that's why he moved. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, I got a hot tip for like, you. Yeah. Move to Ohio. Yeah. Get out of Hollywood. <laughs> there's some heat. The heat is on, and <laughs> that's why I'm out of here. <laughs> I go up to Maddie D. I, Holy shit! This story's not over yet. How can this story be I over? I thought the point of the story was I shouldn't have told them, and I told them. No, that's great. I admire but, that. But there's a great punchline coming here with we your go. homeboy. Here we go. I'm ready. Baby teeth aft. <laughs> I the the low point of this conversation. I'm a little tipsy, and I pulled right Damon now? out of it. No, because you accused me of being high, and yet you here are you are tipsy high. at fucking noon. I opened the door to your car, and you were smoking a big fat J. <laughs> it was a tiny Nothing J. Nothing silent about it. It was a tiny J. It was a tiny J because you had <laughs> smoked it down. Yes, all the way to the filter, and I was like, "Close that window. You're letting out all the good smoke." Oh my god! Anyway, man. what did Matt say? He was like, I, Pete, "The you're low so funny. point was I Pete, go. I'm putting you in good Will Hunting too. Hunting season. Wow, <laughs> better Will Hunting. Better Will Hunting. I said, "Have you been back to Boston lately? Because that's where I'm from." He just says, "No," and I go, "I have nothing." And the conversation just fizzles. Twenty, thirty minutes later, I see Affleck. And I go up to him, and I'm completely different demeanor. Now I've been right. humbled. Right. Matt was nice, but I was humbled. Humbled as in Humboldt like, County? You had a lot of weed on you? Exactly. And I'm in a Humboldt state. I'll say it twice. <laughs> I'm feeling like stop bothering celebrities. You went over to Ben, and you were like, oh, hi. I love it. Thank you. And I need Thank it. you. Thank you. I go up to Benny F., yes. and I go, I don't want to bother you. I'm just a huge fan, and I think you're going to be a great Batman. That's what I said. That's awesome. And he went... Bother me? Are you kidding? He's giving me drinks. We hang out for like 30 minutes. I tell him the story. He's the opposite about, of Matt Damon. I'm not saying, look, it's not a shit on Damon. No, it's a, it's but a it's just celebrating like, it's a, it's an Affleck. elevate Affleck story. It's an elevate flick. Yes. Elevate flick. He deserves to be elevated. And I just wanted to tell you I know a lot of people story. are like, he's got all he deserves. Bullshit. That deserves, he deserves more. He deserves to be elevated. I'm he's a, a funny fucking dude. I'm funny goes a long way in my world. I can put I mean, it As you can tell, I'm fucking like. Although Matty D is very funny. I, I was rewatching Dogma. Matt is very Dogma funny. Not, to as get funny as, not as funny as Ben, though. But he nails two monologues in your movies that were absolutely Agreed. fucking nailed. I'm going to tell. Well, here they, oh, yes, Affleck. Yes, Damon. Damon in the airport talking to the nun yep. is. And you know who that nun is, right? Who's that nun? That nun is. Are we going to talk about her thigh gap? Because yeah, she has tremendous thigh gap. <laughs> that nun is none other than Betty Aberlin. Do you know who Betty Aberlin is? No, but I can pretend. It's where Kurt Cobain is from. That's right. He's <laughs> coming from Betty Aberlin. That's and he carried it like a cross throughout most of his life. Man, he would he he'd hang out on Slater Kitty, but he's from Betty Aberlin. <laughs> <laughs> you rolled with that. Thank you. In any event, Betty Aberlin was known as Lady Aberlin on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Shut the fuck up, because yeah. I know who that is. Well, there you go. So Betty Aberlin's been in a couple Betty, of my movies. Betty Aberlin's a babe, too, yeah, by the way. absolutely. When I'm watching early Rogers, when my daughter would. Watch late Rogers. It. Watch her today. 
Betty no, Averill aged into a fine babers. Uh, I don't want to be even. a creep, but I've noticed that she's very beautiful. Um, she's very talented. She's a theater. Yeah, she kid. said, I didn't mean to say she's not talented. I she's just had to talented. take it out just, of the, you know, the yes, fucking, you, you keeping it, it all superficial and yes. fucking like, oh, she's fucking. She has and that value kind of shit. that exceeds anything I could even Absolutely. name. Absolutely. She educated children for generations, but including I also probably remember, us. Were you a Mr. Rogers kid? Yes, and I was trying to get my daughter into Mr. Rogers. Didn't quite work, but. I would. That's when I was like, "Oh my God!" I never noticed what a beauty. I always yes. knew she was a delight and a strong performer. To yes. be able to act opposite those puppets. That's right. Because they weren't Muppets, where they're funny and shit. No, These no, were no. like they're dead-eyed, hand-sewn <laughs> Fred Rogers sock puppets. Fred Rogers voice yeah. sock and there puppets. Is, Hi. Yes. And no one can make fun of it. Meow meow. Yeah. Meow, and then meow, he literally meow, says meow meow. 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 And she yeah. had to sit there with a straight face and yep. be like, "Yes, King Friday." <laughs> <laughs> there is a problem in the kingdom. Uh, but and then anyway, comes that's Betty Abelin. Betty Abelin okay. plays the nun. All right. She's been All in right. a few of my flicks. Um, okay. Anyway, so Matt, I would suggest that Wait, Matt I, crush that monologue because he he's acting it. with Betty, Betty Abelin. And he was probably pretty excited. He was the Mr. Being Rogers similar. of that scene. He, he was. was the King Friday. He was, he was the, the King Friday. Friday. He was the dead-eyed King Friday. <laughs> Dead Which up. is what Hollywood is known as, uh, damn as. He, I uh, thought of him more as an X the Owl, to be honest with you. X the Owl. What's going on there? Very He's, queeny uh, kind of voice, is no, all I'm going to say. No, no. He's like, hello. No, yeah, X was X the Owl? I believe he Stop got rid knocking of his, on my door. He got rid of his name as some sort of statement. Oh, you mean it's like a Malcolm X kind of I don't, situation? No, I didn't say that at all. That's, I think that's you what took you it into a race place. I all believe right. I was just saying he replaced his name. Look, Prince as I style, tried to say with earlier, a symbol. you can't be canceled for a yes and. That's a fact. Is that right? It stands up in comedy court. Fair enough. Your <laughs> Honor, he was yes and. So <laughs> yes everybody's ended. clean. Um, the other incredible monologue. Yes. Johnny Depp in uh, in uh, oh, how am I? Bl- Tusk. I was going to say two. He does to the camera. To camera. One, t- it's a one or one and it's unbelievable. Can I make it even worse? You- can I make it even worse for you? Yeah. He, uh, we go to shoot that scene, and um, he was, I was like, uh, we open with the monologue, so I'm gonna do a slow kind of push into you the whole time. And he goes, Oh, I'm on camera? And I said, Yeah. And he goes, Because it says off screen. And I looked at the script, and for some reason, it said the entire monologue was off screen. So he thought he was going to be able to read it off screen. I was like, oh, my God, no. That's how we open. We fade up on you and push in. And he goes, all right, just give me a few minutes. And he fucking committed the thing to memory. And then. It's a difficult moment. It was like action. Too. And then fucking he spit it out. Compliment coming your way. I know we're talking about how great Jay Depp is. Yeah. But the writing of that monologue is super funny. Yeah, it was. I was inspired on that movie. But, you know, I had fun talent to play with. Michael Parks, the guy who plays Howard Howe who I'd worked with on Red State, he's a Quentin fave. Um, you know, he'll bring, he, well, he's passed. He, he brought out the best of me because he could just deliver the batshit craziest dialogue and make it real. I believe it. Yeah. And that's what Jay Depp does. Same thing, yeah. Here's my question for you. Thought. That's why <laughs> Depp did the movie. We knew each other through the kids, but he was a huge Michael Parks fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he was like, I get to work with Parks, let's do it. Here's my question. When, do you remember what take it was? That you used? The first. He did one take. That's it. Okay. I'm so glad I asked. One take, two camera. I, after he was done, I was like, and we cut. We're moving on. Bang, bang, moving on. It was perfect. And then somebody was like, we don't have, there was no film. There's no film in the camera. <laughs> and I was like, still, bang, bang, moving on. <laughs> Johnny has somewhere to be. We'll figure it out in post. It was, it's so good. My question for you yeah. is, do you watch from Village or do you watch like Tarantino down the lens? Like, uh, from Village. From Village. How fucking happy are you covering your face? Delighted. As Scott it Moser, has to be Scott one of the Moser, happiest he moments of your Tusk, life. It was, absolutely. Scott Mosier, when he watched Tusk, like, you know, because it came off of a podcast that we were fucking riffing on together and stuff. But when he saw it, he goes, in a movie full of f- fucked up shit, perhaps the most fucked up thing is that Johnny Depp is in this movie. So funny. And he delivers this massive fucking monologue. With a big old ding dong With a big dick of a nose. Yeah, with a little cut right in the center so it looks like a fucking dick. Yeah, 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 you gotta get that joke. It was, that was kind of magic. At that point I was like, I I mean, I was a little full, I'm not saying I was full of myself as too hard, but I really felt like, oh my God, if I could pull this off, I could literally make anything happen. It's a good thing I use these powers for good as opposed to like a weather machine or something like that. Yeah, that's like right. That. Second up clouds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. fucking like, you know, wreaking vengeance or trying to get money from nations and shit. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Pointing it's, death rays. Instead of supervillain, I went yeah. indie filmmaker. 
So close. Those are the two choices. Yeah, they're very close. Those are the two choices. Yes. Um, let me ask you a little bit about food. I'm a bit of a food addict. I'm curious. You know, we had Joel food. Furman on this podcast, Dr. Joel Furman, who made up the diet that you did. Is this misinformation? I was on. Did a, you do the potato diet? I do take. I did. I did, but I didn't do it through him. I do. There's a Dr. Furman's like uh, supplements that I take. Sounds okay. like him. I got to the potato diet through Pendulette. Pendulette. Also I got part. it through Ray Cronies. That was the guy he trained under. So Ray Cronies has a program called Just Sides, and the first stage of his program is the potato diet. Okay. Um, I'm not saying he invented it, but he was the guy that I got. Through. All right, I got excited because I but think Furman, that- I know Dr. Furman because he yeah. makes these dietary supplements that I've been taking ever since I became a vegan. That I was turned on to by Ray Cronies. And the movie Fed Up, which blew me away as well. You like that movie? I, I love any- Anything that's like, hey man, stop you've eating. You've been had. Yeah. I actually, it wasn't just stop being, I know I made, I'm the guy that made the Thanksgiving table joke earlier. <laughs> so I love a good soft joke. Yes. But I also do and feel like- Soft joke, yeah, yeah, say. like a mean spirited, even yeah. you could even say yeah, <laughs> hardcore. It was like, I'm sorry, were you talking about your new death experience? Can I make a holiday joke here? <laughs> now it's time, right? It's appropriate holiday joke. <laughs> the calendar, the calendar kids <laughs> could be a very funny during thing. your <laughs> near death experience story. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I love things that show that we've been had in the same way that like cigarettes or nicotine delivery systems food can often just be sugar they just want to get you hooked and, and, and I'm you not, like that sort of thing you I'm like not trying to be a victim sort of I like out. I like being enlightened and yeah. someone going You're like, like ah you, know, you pulled what? the wool over my eyes for, for so long but now I can see exactly yeah. And when you get your like gut health into it and the fact that you have like millions of little micro guys in there that are insisting that you keep giving Midi -chloridians, them. Midichloridians, I believe they're called. Metachlorines, yeah. Metachlorines. More than metachlorines? Midichlorines. Is this later Star Wars? Is this prequels? I'm sorry, do you mean better Star Wars? I'm sorry, the best Star yeah. Wars? <laughs> the best Star Wars. Yes, it is later Star Wars. My favorite Star Wars is Return of the Clones. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> say what it the is. Clones. They haven't made it yet. <laughs> Return of the Clones. My favorite Star Wars has not been made yet. That's how good it is. Do you own anything from the Star Wars world? Saga? No, do you have like a lightsaber? Or no. You seem like Dave a Mandel. Guy. You know Dave, you know who Dave Mandel is. Who? It's a guy you should have on your show. Very funny Tell me. individual who worked on Saturday Night Live for years. Okay. Um, we'll have him after Larry. Affleck. We'll with, do a two for if you package Larry. him with Affleck. Done and done. Larry. Um, <laughs> okay, we have that on three cameras. Who's so the Larry? Yeah, like, like I can fucking speak for Ben Affleck. I was like, oh, he'll do it. Um, Larry, what's his fuck? What's he doing? Larry fucking curb your <laughs> shit. Larry David. So he worked on That's what on we call curb liquid death. He, like, LDs, liquid LDs. Larry Davids. He, uh, he worked on curb forever. He took over Veep after like three seasons, four seasons or whatever. Okay. Um, and now he's doing uh, an HBO series about the White House cleaners from the 60s or during the Nixon administration. So in any event, very funny guy. Why the fuck did I bring him up in the first place? We were talking about your near death experience, food. You've been had Star Wars. Star Wars. Thank, Thank you. you. Well done. Now off, that's producing. That's off camera. That's fucking producing. That's off camera. That makes up for like spazzing out and dropping your fucking laptop. That before. was sheer because you terror. read a shocking email an hour into you a podcast. You got the email oh, from shit. Judd that he was looking for the text on his phone for. Is that what it was? Oh, uh, that is scary. That's the worst. I hereby forgive you. Um, back to Dave Mendel. I brought up Dave Mendel because years ago, when we were working on the Clerks cartoon, and he was kind of the brains behind the Clerks cartoon, he's a very funny guy, he showed me a Stormtrooper helmet. And he goes, this is from A New Hope. And I was like, get out of here, man. He's like, I bought it for 25,000 bucks. And I was like, you got screwed, bro. 25,000 bucks? What are you, nuts? Do you know what that helmet's worth tonight? Twenty-two thousand bucks. Twenty-three thousand dollars. <laughs> or fucking more. More. Yeah, that shit only goes up, man. He's definitely got himself. Oh, stormtrooper like stock only goes up. Only. When only I was up. at a couple in, hundred thousand dollars, that thing got be. Worth. You think so? Oh yeah. And I was in San Francisco, and they had a. You know, what is it? What have, you've been there? Lucas's thing. It's where all the Lucas stuff is. Uh, the San Francisco. The power, the, the yeah, the Presidio. The Presidio. Huh? Anyway, I, I was there. That's where Lucasfilm is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I okay. Then I was at Lucasfilm. Yeah. And they. No, had, I'm asking you. I'm uh, not telling you. Huh? You're asking me. Yeah, you were throwing it around like I should know. What? What am I? I like the movie, so I don't okay. know the fucking. Guy. Do you have Kevin Smith's phone number? Because I could ask him. I'm just saying. It seems like something you would know. No. 
Not at all. I'm an outsider, bro. What do you think I'm fucking tight with Lucasfilm and shit? If I was, how come I made How did you get married at uh, Star Wars Ranch? We were mixing a movie there at the time. I did it illegally. We didn't ask. Oh, wow. Yeah, it wasn't like George Lucas what, married us and shit. Okay. Like, I asked the mixers. I was like, if I get married here, should I ask somebody? They're like, don't. Apologize later on. Just do it. Forgive and us. So we eloped right there. Yeah. And then you. he found out later on. He's like, oh, who got married? <laughs> oh, wait, who? who? Hi, ho. This who? is George D. Frog. <laughs> George D. Lucas. The George film D. belongs Lucas. to me, not the fans. <laughs> Greedo shot first. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, okay. <laughs> Boy, he's, he's, he's controversial, but he's cute. <laughs> Can't say no to the guy. He's adorable. My, my responsibility is to my vision, not the uh, fans. <laughs> well, Can we do a podcast yeah. where, um, where like, you no, like are Kermit reality. George Lucas, and I, you just make me laugh yeah. the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> okay, so what were we? I don't even know what we were saying. We were saying uh, that uh, the only good Star Wars is, is a, a dead, dead Star, Star Wars. Wars. Oh, and th- I saw uh, a stormtrooper there in San Francisco, and it looked so budget. It was it was like, and they a showed me stormtrooper. No, they were like, this is like one of the better condition ones. But like on the day, yeah. they're like filling in the black parts of the suit with a magic marker, and probably, you can tell probably. And it's so fucking charming you know i saw in real life irl as the kids used to say online i think they still do the riddler suit that frank gorshin used to wear Uh on the 1960s batman tv sure and you know it had question marks all over it of course they're literally hand drawn on or stenciled on with a magic marker and you could see it on the garment yeah like somebody had a stencil and just sharpied in this iconic fucking suit that captured my imagination in childhood where i'm like oh my god could I make that work, or would those question marks turn into giant exclamation yeah, marks yeah, yeah. or whatever the fuck? One of the greatest costumes in comic book history. Yeah. Literally fucking... And the bat symbol yeah. on Adam West's chest also markered in. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was on like the cheapest cardboard, the bat symbol. Like last whole, minute Halloween style. Crazy, but yeah. like they were, they, like they gave a fuck. Like they were like, oh, we got a 3D print shit. Well, They're like, it's a kid's show. Who gives a fuck? That's right. And it's... Little uh, did they know. Low def cameras. Yeah. No There's problem. too. Can you tell me about a time? I should have said that as the director, but I didn't. Low def? Yeah, I didn't go with the fucking technical explanation. You did, and now I feel kind of. You ever just re- realize you didn't pay attention to the take at all, and you're like, oh, let's go again? <laughs> just so you yeah. can, just so you can see time. it? That's how I make movies. Just so you can see it. Let's go one more. Anything different? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd actually like to see that again for the first time. Yeah, I was like, no, do it exactly like you did it. This time I'll watch. No, I, I have a monitor, so I can play shit back. Oh, that's right. There's no such thing as not paying attention. Even if you don't pay attention. But you still need to call out three minutes to watch it. What's Kevin doing? Bro, those three minutes, invaluable to production. I tell people this all the time. ADs get up in my face every once in a while. Like, we got to go. I'm like, bro, I watch this. I'm saving us an hour. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm right. Oh, that's good. Yeah, That's the job of the director. See how serious I got about it? Yeah, I liked it. I did. I put all the funny away. I was like, listen here, Pete Holmes. But that... There's a method to the madness. I'm a filmmaker. The director has to... I watch directors all the time and I'm like, they have to not freak out when the assistant director is yelling at them about time. Or, they don't yell I mean, at me. Not, I, know, I know they don't yell at you necessarily, but they are going like, let's move, let's move, we're there running out of time. There is a lot of like, and, we gotta go. And, and I'm you like, have we to have be all like, the time in the world. That's what you tell yourself? Totally, because I have the ability as writer and director to fucking lose pages in the day. Yeah. So whenever they get like, oh, we're gonna, I'm like, look, I'm, I'm cutting that whole scene. So guess what? We're fine, right? And they're like, oh, we are. Yeah, great. Yeah. I love to be the AD and the, and the D. I love narrating the movie. I don't direct them. Uh, you, know, you ask any critic, they'll tell you. But I don't direct as much as narrate the movie. I host the movie. I treat it like an episode of Saturday Night Live where I'm just like the guest host and shit. Mm. And I keep people in the loop at all times. Like, I don't let them find information out from, like, you know, their department head. I'm like, all right, man, so, like, this is what we're doing, everybody, because I love the sound of my own voice and I'm blazing right, all the time. Right, right. So that's how I direct. What does that say? This says in Smod I Trust. I know we're not supposed to mention other podcasts. Oh, we'll edit that out. Yeah. We're going to... Get lifted out. We're like actually going to make it... Jesus says, talk. You made it weird, and I believe in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is that the new it's title? a weird thing to make you say, but... It's a fucking great title. <laughs> if you could just look in the camera and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that in would... Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you. I do. The one guy, the one when he came to church, and he told me everything's going to be okay. I know. I do find it funny that, like, you're still on the fence. <laughs> Angel came and visited you. Uh, I'm like doubting Thomas until I could stick my fingers in the wounds. Yeah, I understand. I gotta. I need more more evidence. I'm not an I'm not an atheist as much as an agnostic. Okay, 
which is not bad. I'm an agnostic. You it love means eggs. I only believe in Jesus during the holidays. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> during, if eggnog is on, if eggnog is on the shelf. any holiday where <laughs> eggs are involved. So Easter... Christmas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With agnostic. The, with the nog. Agnostic. I'm an agnostic. I like. I also drink Those egg- are two times a year you have to give a fuck about Jesus. That's Easter right. and Christmas. That's right. So you're doing so it right. So you're an agnostic. <laughs> <laughs> we came up. <laughs> yes. This was it. Yeah. Etymologists of the future. This Don't is when the, the term moment. agnostic the became. It was on a podcast <laughs> where I believe they named the the faith. Are you going to do another movie? Ever? No, I mean like soon. Um, yeah, I think so. I think hopefully in the when we're done, like we're gonna tour this movie until people are sick of it. And I think we're done by Christmas. And so probably in January, 2023, there's, two, uh, there's one movie written already. I bought a movie theater back home with some friends of mine. The movie theater I used to go to as a kid when I was in high school, the movie theater I got a hand job in when I was a kid. So you don't own two houses, but you own a movie theater, keep going. Yes. Yeah, because one is a fucking business that makes money, not just an extravagance where it's like, oh, uh, I think we'll sleep in Ojai tonight. My honey. house in Ojai is a wax museum. <laughs> is it? Do you live in a wax museum? Because that'd be amazing. I was like, there's money in a wax Can museum. Can I just say, God, I hope so. Do they have room for a podcast, live show? <laughs> That's the first thing I ask whenever somebody buys things. thing. I'm like, do they have space for a live show? Would you in... Um, do a podcast at your house in Ojai? Jason, Absolutely. ever go to Madame Tussauds and stand really still? Yes. Uh, Jason, uh, can Will I tell you it? a true fucking story? This is Jason Mewes who plays Jason Mewes who plays Jay. was just on stage at San Diego Comic-Con, and he, he told people on stage, I thought it was so charming, that, you know, we have the our feet in the cement at Groman's. He's like, then we want to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He's like, and then we get a wax figure at Madame Tussauds. And I was he like- He said that. He literally said that. I was like, why do you think that's the highest honor? I was like, our feet in the cement is way big. He's like, we've already done that, man, but could you imagine if we had wax? And I was like, yeah, I could. It's easy to imagine. Why do you think that's a big honor? He's like, bro, I went to Madame Tussauds and fucking the Golden Girls and Barack Obama were in the same fucking room. Yeah. No. They're famous. Yeah. Not us. And yeah. I was like, all right, so you won't feel we're famous until we have wax figures. Okay, so you, me, and Jay go yeah. to Madame Tussauds yeah. and you stand there and I'll just kind of film as people come in and go like... I'm sorry, I thought you lived at Madame Tussauds. Did you not, or did you, did you or did you not buy a wax museum? Is that what you told me? That was a comedy routine. Oh, fuck. This is why I hate comics, man, because you never no, know you when they're me. telling the truth. You're no. having a fun time. No, sometimes you have all face lie to you and you get your hopes up where I'm like, fuck, well, just, you own a wax museum? Just to be clear, you thought my house in Ohio was a wax museum. Yeah. Okay. I, thought you, I thought it was one of those charming sitcom stories. I thought you were trying to get another charming. sitcom going with I Judd find the fact that you believe. And you were like, I'm going to buy an Ohio wax Very museum charming. and live in it. And we're going to make a show about oh that. Oh, my God. And that's what you were checking on the phone. You're like, has, has he texted me back? It's interesting. Is this How do Ohio you... investment going to work? I probably should have checked with him before I bought it. Hilarious. <laughs> How do you pitch a modern day Kevin? It has to be a horror movie, right? What? Which one? Like, if you're going to do another movie, would it be horror? Like, would it be more your, your original my recipe? My first horror movie was Jersey Girl. I know. It's gonna let it hang there. I liked it's it. It's a way homer. A bunch of people at home are going, but, but what? Oh, I see what he did there. Oh, I was there was a part of me that was there like There is a horror movie coming. I'm gonna do a Tusk 2. In two 20, Tusks. 20, 2024. Tusks with a S and a money sign through it. Just like, like Jim Cameron and aliens. I'm stealing it. He is fine as a story. Another vegan. I'm putting it up. Is he really? No, yeah, life. I'm putting life. that shit on the poster, man. I'm I'm being naked with my ambition. Yeah, I was like, we want to make we want to make a tusk that And if it's money. like alien, I think aliens was better. But that's ba- that's based on me being twelve I'm with years you 100%, old. But I don't yeah. know if anything could be better than Tusks. It's, it's so fucked up. We don't have Michael Parks. However, we do have Justin Long, and he's an amazing actor too. Yeah. So Justin becomes Michael Parks in this one. He becomes uh, the Howard Howe. Okay. Yeah, he's the crazy one. All right, all right. Feels right. like a spoiler, but here we right. are. Right. I know. We well, got a couple of years. You'll forget. <laughs> Friend of mine, Ratface, Robert Ratface Holtzman. He's a yeah, production no, I designer. I see him in the credits. In my credits. Yeah. He, uh, when he's not production designing on my flicks, he works on M. Night Shyamalan movies as a, like a buyer or some such shit. Mm. <clears throat> and years ago, he was like, I said, what'd you, what'd you put up to? He goes, I just finished a movie with M. Night. So what's it about? And I knew M. Night as a guy who made this movie called Wide Awake, a little movie about a Catholic kid um, with Rosie O'Donnell playing a nun. Hmm. Rosie O'Donnell, I believe, married to Periodontist. <laughs> in any event, in any event, I say, uh, what is this M. Night movie about? <clears throat> this is before anyone calls it an M. Night movie. But yeah. I like his name, so I call it an M. Night movie. M. Night movie. And he goes, um, it's about uh, Bruce Willis is in it. And there's a little boy, and at the end of the movie, you find out that he's dead. He he said that. Literally how he defined the movie to me. So It's like I the go, worst log line on Netflix. <laughs> Bruce Willis is a guy, but then at the end, you find out he's dead. You're like, oh, man. 
<laughs> so I, I, years later, the movie comes out and I go see it. And I'm in the theater and, you know, fucking when he reveals that he's been dead the whole time, what is my reaction? You're still blown away. I'm blown away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely blown yeah, away. And yeah. it's not until I'm heading to the parking lot with my wife where I was like, that was fucking amazing. Yeah. He was dead the whole time? Yeah. That is, and then I was like, wait a second. That was Ratface told me this story. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I knew this shit, but I forgot. That's so what, I can tell so you we'll everything forget. about yeah, Tusks, yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. forget. And you worked with Haley Joe. I did. Is he a, a delightful times. man? Oh my God, so delightful. Yeah, I believe it. Um, did, will he throw out an I see dead people joke? No, <laughs> but he but he will he will go, he'll say shit like this. You'll be like, um, cut. And then he'll be like, I have a sixth sense, we're going again. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Wow. See what I'm saying? I would prefer an I see dead people kind of well, thing. Well, come on. That's a little on the nose. I like that he fucking backdoored it. It's a little on a, the Johnny Depp's dick nose. <laughs> being Probably. Honest. Tell Probably. me, Which Kevin. Which works well, man. The ding dong nose? I, I mean, like, it could be ridden, I'm sure. Like a, like one of those Sibian machines or whatever like that. Ridden? Yeah, ridden. Oh, like a... Like a dick. Like, one like would somebody... Ride a dick. Yeah. Don't get all waspy on me now where you're like, oh... I didn't understand your puerile joke because no, I'm, I'm a church man. I, I was just picturing someone I'm a church man, riding see? Johnny Depp's prosthetic ding dong nose. Fucking and it took me and out of this you, conversation and it, and it for a moment. A hard. Understandably. Yes. Things that make me hard. That That's you, the title of your fifth book. Things, things that, that make, make me, me hard. hard. <gasps> Meditations on Love by Pete Holmes. That would be a great, like, Jared Kushner. Things that make me hard or something like a great shocking. Sure, yeah, I don't know why. I just picked a rando. rando I would read that book. If Jared Kushner wrote a book, Things That Make Me Hard, and it was legit, like, yeah. it wasn't just a fake title. It was like, no, was this is really, a list of all the things that get me erect. This is my erotic journal. I would buy it just to see if, like, Ivana, Ivanka, 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 Ivanka. 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 If his wife was on it. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. would have to be, right? The incredible Ivanka. He probably puts her in the credits of the book. Like, sure. to my wife, who always makes me hard, but doesn't put her in the body of the book, so technically she's not it's on classy. the classy. It's classy. No, I just know how to read that guy. Oh. Yeah, I thought always it was, did. From the moment he got in the White House, yeah, I was like, don't trust yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Tell me as we're coming to a close. What? It's over? It's done. We were told you had a hard out. Dick. Yeah, I do <laughs> when I need to, but not now. <laughs> Only with my wife. Why would I bring that here? <laughs> it's like your idea of heaven. You think I'm going to bring my hard dick to the next fucking... Precisely. I'm going to leave it behind and be yes, free. and be free. Free. Free of that micro self. hard dick. That's anyway, right. Anyway, what M are you thinking? A uh, hard out? I, I was a hard out. as they say in Canada? Hard out. Yeah. Let me hard out. There was a new joke in, in Tusk. That's when you're playing. Yep. There's a zillion of them in yoga hose. There's a movie you probably didn't bother to see. When Did you, you say bother to see. Well, I mean, just if, do the research. I'm going to be on the show. I'm going to watch my least successful movie so we can. You know what? About it. I went ahead and watched like seven of the other ones. Forgive <laughs> me that one. for not being pulled in. It's the ones by that the you name ignore. Yoga Housers. Yoga Housers. Uh, that's what uh, <laughs> Stan Lee said. Yoga. He's in the movie. He does a little cameo. If I can drop wow, names, that was me. If I can. I know you were fucking telling Matt Damon and Ben Affleck stories, but if I can tell a only to you story, yeah, only to me. To, that true. story came out of you so smoothly it's well rehearsed it was Denzel. you probably still tell your the fucking judd apatel of your personal life that story at night you know i'm gonna call judd asleep. on the way home and, and tell him that story not him i'm talking about your wife the judd oh apatel yeah yeah, of your yeah. no vows and you probably story. tell her like as you fall asleep at night you're like one time honey are you awake yeah <laughs> one time ben affleck found She's me really funny at a party i know <laughs> i know <laughs> i know sweetie go to bed <laughs> she's turned away from you like this <laughs> <laughs> it's this fucking story again oh god this same right. fucking story tell me the time you've laughed in your life the mm. hardest that's the weirdest way i've ever asked it think about a time you laughed uh probably really on smodcast i probably have it on tape okay or if we can call it that um I recorded it that's what i loved about podcasting when i started oh back in 2007 okay I'm sorry. We're I'm looking at all the cameras, so everybody goes, oh, he has been doing it that long. And back then, yeah. there were no cameras. Podcasting legend, 15 years, kids. All Laid right. the track. Thank all you. Right. In all any right. event. All right. During those shows, Scott Mosier and I laughed so fucking hard. Um, we made each other laugh hysterically. That would be it, hands down. Any episode of Smodcast, you can roll and hear me like crying through most of it. Like Scott, remember, I'm like, Ben, I have like one of the funniest people I ever met. Scott Mosier, one of them as well. 
Yeah. Two people that like, thank God they didn't enter my field specifically of being a funny person because I would have lost to both of them. Right. Yeah. Well, Benny App didn't need it because he was a smoking babe. Well, he's got a fucking hog like you read about. Shit. Huge F hog. Massive. Got that's that how you get ahead in life, kids. Hogs. Armageddon. Armageddon. Arma ho hogageddon. Hogageddon. <laughs> That dude's got a hog a get dong. <laughs> he tells a very funny hog a get dong. I had to say it again. Hog a deg dong. You got a hog a deg. That's will a you text him you right that, now? Will you do that got a hog a deg dong. I think it would disturb him. I think he'd be like, "Now I'm sorry, I invited you to my wedding." Um, will you do a sketch? Hog a deg dong. Hog a deg dong. Yes. We're gonna have to make it harder to say. You gotta play. Uh, you gotta play Affleck. Of course, I'm Affleck. Harry, I love you. You gotta scream at him. Oh yeah, when I'm going up the elevator yeah, back yeah, to the yeah. ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? Great movie. Um, so you gotta when, do it in the when, Batman voice. Harry, I love you. He has a different voice. He has the augmenter, which doesn't is matter. But nobody cool. cares. Nobody. You think anybody's gonna call you on fucking that kind of pedantic bullshit and be yes. like, I don't know, Pete. That's not the right Batman voice in the comic book world. If you make them laugh, they'll forgive you. I think you're right. That's true. I sometimes, I sometimes want. It's gonna make them fucking laugh. They're gonna be like, I can't believe you were doing a Mad Magazine send up of a 20 year old movie. Pete, you got your finger on the fucking pulse. Sometimes when Val and I, my Jed Apatow, Lady Jed Apatow, are, are laying in bed or we're doing something silly and we're right. laughing and I go like, do you think anyone's doing what we're doing right now? And I go, I hope so. Otherwise, what the hell are we fighting for? Which is from Hog and Dog. That is from Hog and Dog. Yeah, and then I sing, I don't want to go with And then you, you whip a few fucking animal crackers down her blouse. Right down her panties. Yeah, yeah. I well, hated no, that blouse, I just said blouse. panties. Doesn't he do her shirt It's down first. her panties. He goes, then go down under. And he puts it in a, in the lining. I can't, I can't say panties again. It's he so puts a cookie by her cookie. He puts it by the cookie. And then he then he ate it out. Right. That's in the uncut version. In the director's That's in the Zach, cut. In the Snyder in cut the version. In the Snyder cut of Armageddon. <laughs> he goes. And now I take the gazelle and, go, and, then and it's just, I eat it's, it. It's anal out of the on, ravine. On, on the cookie It just gazelle. keeps going with more <laughs> sexual <laughs> innuendo. <laughs> it got to a wide and you just there's, <laughs> and she's just sitting there's there. There's 20 minutes of like pretty much silence as you just hear like <laughs> <laughs> And then we got it. Now this is real and every once in a while she's like, "Uh, oh, wait, uh, she's being He's being eaten." In, in mine, my version of Hagadegdon. In mine, he's eating the cracker's butt. He starts with the cracker, but then he moves on to no, her. In and my, then he just gets awkwardly quiet because they're like <laughs> they're like, "Why did they shoot this? This is like porn." This is like, are they, I think he's really, you're not. I that's think funny. this, is, this is like a fucking Lisa Bonet <laughs> fucking, you know, <laughs> angel heart moment. Are you old enough to remember of, that? I don't. Do you know that? I would have yes handed So you. Lisa Bonet and what's his fucking name? Um, you know, the actor, uh, he was in uh, The Wrestler. Clint Howard. No. <laughs> what a great pull though. <laughs> the Wrestler from The Wrestler, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Harvey Manegdon. No, fucking, come uh, on. Dwight. Dolph Lundgren. Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. I should have said nine and a half weeks. Mickey Rourke's. Mickey Rourke's. I'm like my mom. I put an S on everybody's last Mickey name. Mickey Rourke's. Are you going over to Pete Holmes' house? Barnes and Noble. Said. Pete Holmes' house. She'd add an S to it. That's three. Mickey Rourke and, and Lisa Bonet are in this movie, Angel Heart. And they shot it back in like the late 80s or something like that. And it is <laughs> reputed that they actually had sex on camera in the movie. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you like look it up Like the getaway with uh, Baldwin and Basinger. They actually had sex on camera? I mean, from what I could tell in my prepubescent understanding, I yelled, that's penis and vagina, that's penis and vagina. <laughs> I yelled you it. You yelled it in the theater? <laughs> no, me and my friend Ern rented it. And, and you it yelled was it like, at each other? And I was like, that's penis and vagina, that's penis and vagina. Like, Are I you thought, serious? Is that, because if I was, rent the getaway, which yeah. I will now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will see connection? I've, I've seen, you don't see it, but it's so, what's happening? Don't <laughs> fuck with me. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. Famous fucking nudity is huge, dude. Huge. Watch the getaway. You think for sure that I see dick. This is like, all right, think about I all think the right moves of Tom of Cruise. Dick. All the right moves of Tom Cruise you see is dick. You do? Flat out. Ding you see fucking Tom's cruise, Ethan man. Hunt's, his cruise missile. Ethan's hunt? Ethan's hunt. Absolutely. <laughs> Watch all the right moves. Him and Leah Thompson, at one like point they go into the kitchen late at night after fucking and you, they open the fridge door and you literally see his dick. Same way that you see Rob Lowe's dick in about last night. Almost a similar situation. Wow. Uh, kitchen light and shit like that. So I'm fascinated by like when you see real people. I'm pretty sure you the see nudity the you're not silhouette. Supposed to see. It's one thing to see breasts or an ass, but when like a dick. you see a dick or fucking an asshole. Have you ever seen an asshole in a movie? Yes. In a mainstream movie? I'll tell you. Don't say Ben Affleck because that's not funny. No, no, he's no, a good guy. I, he's a funny guy. He's a good guy and he's going to do the podcast because you're going to make it happen. Yes. 
Uh, the movie that I've seen a butthole in. Let's see if it's the same one. American Psycho, director's cut. Whose? It's one of the, um, he brings home two sex workers. And you see a butthole? And at one point I swear you're like, I just saw a butthole. And it's, I got to watch the director's cut? It's the director's cut. <laughs> I don't know. For me, the theatrical cut is the director's cut. That right? sounds like marketing. It's, it's a way to Mary sell Mary Heron is just like, look, this cut, this is the director's cut because you can see asshole. It's called it. the butthole cut. The butthole cut, just like that cat's picture. <laughs> yeah. I have a um, Snyder there cut. There is a picture. This is a little butthole. finger on the pulse. And, and, and with respect to the, uh, the late, dearly departed, Anne Heche, she just passed away recently. Mm -hmm. Wonderful actress. One of my favorite actresses in a movie called Wag the Dog who stands her ground between fucking Robert De Niro and Bill Macy in a scene. Yeah. And between Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman in other scenes. Mm -hmm. In any event, she was in the Psycho remake that Gus Van Sant did. That's funny. I was thinking about that because you did scenes in Clerks 3 from Clerks 1, and I said you Gus Van Sant did it. Thank you. And when they, when he, Vince Vaughn, spoilers, kills her in the shower, yeah. she's the new Janet Lee. she falls face forward in an overhead shot, and you can see... Be the sphincter. It, it blew my mind. Blew my mind. In a theater, it blew my mind. And then I was like, I can't wait for home video to see if I saw what I saw. Yeah, I can't and wait a home for video, a laser disc. I saw what I saw. And on the laser disc, I had some herringbone effect to it when I paused it. So I couldn't be sure. <laughs> That's a deep cuts laser disc joke. Thank you very much. <laughs> very I good. I felt very proud of that. Very good. Pulling herringbone from my fucking memory. But but when on DVD, I, well, on Blu-ray, unmistakably is what it Blu -ray. is. Blu-ray. Yes, Blue brown eye ray is what I call it. In that I instance. was looking for it, and you I, found I saw it. you struggling, you but I had it. to go faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case your wife came by, because I wanted her to be more impressed by me, the way Aptow's wife was impressed by me in San Diego. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what a treat this has been. Oh, we're done. <laughs> I know goodbye when I hear one. Oh, I've, I, I've been with plenty of women that are like, I saw, well, I saw, I saw Katie. Ah, <laughs> time to go. Katie looked at her watch. Is I'm a highly was? sensitive person. Fair enough. You? I do. I've, I could. I do have a Rolling Stone interview. Not to. Oh I, really? Not to impress anybody from the year two thousand. I'm, yes, a, I'm more of a spin man. Is that what? Oh, wow. I'm an I'm an AP guy. That's uh, spin still exists. No. You were like, I love it so much that I don't give. I'll never do Rolling Stone. Spin. I'll wait till spin comes back. I'm a loyalist. Spin was the cracked of Mads Rolling Stone. I completely understood that. Yeah. And I agree. But I, would, <laughs> I would do you one better, and I would say it was not the cracked. It was the crazy. Oh, yeah, that's a deep, 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 deep. That's like herringbone on a laser Thank disc. You. Thank you. Um, I made three people laugh with both of those jokes, but those three yeah. will follow me to the ends of the earth. That sounds like a good mission statement for your it's career. It's the title of your sixth book. Those three will follow if me to the ends of the earth. you could remember the title of my first book. Fuck. I know, I can't No, man, there. you know how disposable comedy is. Well. That's why you make movies, so that you write this shit down and remember it, and, it and people remember forever. that joke happens. Yeah, but yeah podcasts, yeah. like... We're, we're not even, the dust hasn't settled from the podcast generation yet. Generations from now, they're going to be analyzing the shit we said and be like, they had no idea how funny they were. Aww. And they just threw it away. They just threw it away. They didn't yeah. ask to get paid for it even, yeah. unless they ran an ad. Yeah. They just gave it away free Magic for nothing. Magicspoon.com slash weird. Yes. Or what's yours? I don't have one. You don't have Magic Spoon? No. no are ads? they good? Oh, I love Magic Spoon. What do they do? It's a high protein, low sugar cereal that tastes like Fruit Loops, and uh, and they pay those advertising dollars. I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I ain't heard from them. They ain't tried us. I want to be clear. I loved them first. Then we reached out. Now they're on. What if? I mean, I like to. Order's think not important. Ranking's not important. Doesn't matter which reason. Like the money's good and the taste is good. They're both good. They're both equally good. But I'm more interested in the money. Aren't you doing I got okay? plenty of things to eat, but I need sponsors at all times. Send them right. my number, would you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we love a guy who's like, I don't care about the taste. Ah! <laughs> what a great spokesperson. You would love Magic Spoon, though. Is it like cereal? Tasty yeah. cereal? It tastes like uh, sugar cereal. It's like tricks? The, well, it tastes like the Fruit Loops. Like, one not like tricks. <laughs> exactly like Fruit Loops. Does it really? But the frosted one is actually my favorite. Frosted it tastes like, like marshmallows. Cornflakes? It's just called frosted. Now we're just two guys talking about ma magicspoon.com. We've always been two guys just talking about Magic Spoon. Promo code weird at checkout. The Magic Spoon. There is no Magic Spoon. <gasps> there you go. Neo? There you go. What's your favorite Matrix? First one. Of course. Come on. What's your least favorite? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everybody, everyone that's not everyone the first knows one. It's, well, that poor third one. Uh, the third one's a little tough. Well, the dancing. Oh, no, the dancing's that in the, the second, second one. one. bro. Yeah. Actually, the third one, not as bad as the second one. The second one was like. 
No, second one, you're forgetting the fight on the freeway. Yeah, but the, the dancing. The, yeah, I, I've got real good at skipping the dancing. <laughs> just like, it wasn't a full chapter. What a great movie. They fucked with us. They could have made it a chapter, like a skippable didn't. chapter, but you have to skip and then rewind. What does it say about us? Like, it probably says something about us that, like, the joyous part of the movie, we're like, ew. It's not joyous. It's too, it's It's, it's like indulgent. the Matrix itself. Remember Agent Smith's like, we gave you paradise and you fucked it up because you wanted it to I be think bad. I this all the time. It's the same thing. Whole batches. We want whole we want batches the, were lost. Yeah, we yeah. want the bad part. Like That's, we crave the bad part. I would as I, opposed to celebrate. Look, look at them. They're all happy. They're alive. They're dancing. They're fucking. And all of us collectively as a society, we're like we reject the happiness well, of we the matrix. Want, we want a movie about a guy who who drags his ass in and works at a at a bad grocery store. You know, like you know what I'm saying? It's a good like, idea. You know, Somebody you kept that. talking about young Ke hilarious young Kevin. Yeah. Because we know it's those stories. It's the grind. It's the it's the struggle. It's this. It's I would even say it's the no, time. No, I talk about suffering. young Kevin because I'm thankful to him, not because he grinded grinded it out or because he was some working class hero. I talk about him and I'm thankful to him because I'm baffled by the decision he made. I live in the largesse, the success of the decision he made. I know what largesse means. I don't. <laughs> you don't have to say success. Little foot. You don't have to condescend to me, man. Check. It's my homes. Keep antagonizing me. Watch what happens, Casey Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> That's <was> very good. <laughs> Casey Affleck in real life or in the movies? IRL. Both. Because you're like, here's another story. I met Casey well, Affleck when good, I was in Massachusetts. That's a good <laughs> film story. They were shooting yeah. Gus Van Sant. We're back to Gus Van Sant. Are you talking about Goodwill Hunting? Goodwill Hunting. Are you going to tell me a story, uh, me, the co executive producer of Goodwill Hunting, a story about Goodwill Hunting? Yeah, get ready Please for it. Please do. Well, let's see if you I'll know. I feel like I haven't heard it before. Let's see, see if you if know it. See if it's well, you tell me an anecdote I'll, about the line "keep antagonizing me." Watch go ahead, what happens. Go ahead, you go tell ahead. me. Go ahead. No, what, you what go. is it, Kevin? You go, Kevin. I want to hear it. If they were it. shooting the television edits, yeah. you didn't know this. Keep going. And they kept it because it was, the line was "keep fucking with me." Watch what happens. Casey Affleck says, "Keep antagonizing me." Watch what happens. And it stayed. It's an in excellent the film. story. P.S. I was on set that day. Well, why didn't you tell it? Because it's not my story to tell. It's Casey's. I don't walk around telling Casey stories on his behalf like you All do. Right. Why don't you tell more stories about his brother's One of the least attractive parts about your personality <laughs> is the amount of Casey Affleck name dropping and storytelling you do. Like one time Casey did this. It's like, get over it. You know what? Pete, you do great things too. Talk about yourself. Casey, I don't know if he lives in this neighborhood, but I see him all the time. Does he really? Yeah. And I never also bother. Also a funny guy. Because one of my favorite movies, it's tied for first, is The Assassination of Jesse James. Oh, shit. And I oh, almost no, Hold went, on, hold on, hold huh. on. What? If you're going to call it, call it what the real By title is. By the coward is. Robert Ford. Thank you. One of the longest unnecessary titles in the history of film. No, I'm going to do one of these to the title. A Jeff's Kiss? Why? Be Jeff. <laughs> That's what we call it on Fat Man Beyond, Jeff's Kiss. Edit that out. Because <laughs> not only did they use lenses from the time, yes. which they did, which yeah. is awesome. Yes. They... You salty son of a bitch. No, I'm like, that's, sorry, I'm not that's, talking about mall rats. No, that's great. I'm, <laughs> it's just when people get like, like, like that it with looks film awesome. where they're like, it's got to be 35, man. I no, it's not, it's not even lenses the lenses from the period. I'm like, all right. Or you're talking to somebody who's like, I want to make a thing. They're like, well, it's too expensive. I was like, all right, we'll cut the whole third act. And they're like, all right, now you can make a thing. I, I, like, I, that. I like, Fold, I bend like a Senate page constantly. I'm just like, whatever the fuck, man. Like a Senate page? Yeah, that was an old joke from the 80s. There was a scandal that went around at one point where like all the Senate pages were having sex with the senators. And so a common reference in the oh. late 80s was that I bent like a Senate page. I didn't know what it, oh, Senate page. Yeah. I thought it was like a centipede, Senate, Senate page. No. It yeah. was a human sent page. Because those bend really good. The human good. Senate page is my new movie that oh I'm going to do. Oh my God. And now we're back onto it. How about that Eminem lyric? Backwards like uh, like fucking Bob and Silent J. You hear that lyric? Let me tell you something. Knowing that exists in the world makes my death easier. Is it cool? Yeah, because I've been immortalized by somebody who is important to the culture. But it was like, it's so iconic. Nobody's like, oh, deep cut. Everyone's like, yeah. Yeah, it was. It wasn't Pretty one cool. of those. Yeah, it was nice. Believe me, it was very. Never met the old Marshmath? No. Because it would be fun to be like. <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> you just go up one to time you said my name, kind of. Yeah, but he would know who you are. That's fun. Woody, though. Woody? Yeah. We're talking Woods Toy Story now? Woody, yeah, like Woody and Buzz. Now, would he necessarily know? Of course he would. I don't know. I met David Fincher. I'm going to name drop. I met David Fincher at Ben Affleck's wedding, and this is what I said to him when he was like, I am David Fincher. I said, that's what you look like. 
hilarious. Yeah, because I didn't know what he looked like. Yeah. And now I did. And I was like, wow, fucking, like, I always met a figure of mystery. I never looked him up online to see yeah. what he looked like. I did for my Halloween costume two years ago. I went as David Pincher. It's David Fincher, but he's a lobster, <laughs> which is my pitch for Tusks 2. Not Tusks. That is Tusks good. 2, he turns him into a lobster, but that it's call him David man. Pincher. I also have one for- I want one year's David Flincher. The whole time I was like, Every you time I getting... met somebody, they're like, who are you? And they're like, oh, you're David Flincher. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a lot of fun today. God, are you wrapping it up again? That sounds like wrap-up talk. You know, it sounds like, it would oh, be nice. It would be nice if Dave's... Yeah, it's so late. Like, I know you got a long job. You got a lot of things to do tomorrow, don't you? Buddy, no, I don't, as a matter of fact. A I cleared four days for this, so I put on new tapes. <laughs> don't, don't test me. You, Katie's over there, like, please don't test me. Katie's like, our look, record is she's three like, look, I got hours my and flight 40. settled, so I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Katie's out of town after this. Is that right? Three hours and 40 is our record. Who was it? Matt McCarthy, my old roommate, who's oh, that's a adorable. delight. Yeah. My record is four and change on Joe Rogan. Four and change? On a guest, as a guest. Okay. So you on my own podcast? Six. Six? Yeah. Wow. That's... I love the sound of my own voice. I can listen to a Kevin Smith podcast all damn day. I love that. A lot of people don't have the self-love that you do. And wouldn't you say it's a requisite? I, I, I did grow to love my voice, though. At first, I didn't. And over the course of podcasting since 2007, I was able to modulate my voice. Could I you edit out the year he started podcasting? Because I, I want everyone to hear he's that. He's That's very important. proud of that. Please edit that out. Very proud of it. Yeah. Um, but I did. I learned to like bring my voice to a place I like it. If I listen Lower. to my old voice, it's up here, and I, I don't like it. Huh. I like where I it's am. It's a little X the owl. It, it is. A little X the owl. As, uh, I believe I made clerks back in the day. Who's knocking on my door? <laughs> no one wanted to tell Mr. Rogers that it was a little queenie. It was a little like, come inside my tree. He was, he was, they were all He's, kind of royal, right? Like they all came Oh, across. King Friday is very like, Hello, I am King Friday. I decree. I decree that today is Friday. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess he, and then the other one was, what was the tiger's name? Uh, Daniel Stripe. Daniel Stripe saying meow meow, yeah meow meow. The, I I don't love this story. I'm going to tell you two stories, and I want you to tell me your version of them. Okay. One is my brother would dress up as Daniel Stripe a tiger, and I believe he came home and my dad didn't like it that he was dressed up as no, it was uh, Henrietta Pussycat. He didn't like that. He didn't like that so too. Henrietta Pussycat was from. Um, it was something else. It was yeah, similar. Was it from. But here's number two, and people on the, that listen to the pod know this already. Henrietta Hippo was from um, the New Zoo Review. We cut it. We widen a reveal. You're in your car driving home. <laughs> that, that's when you realize it. <laughs> Henrietta, the car is empty. Hen like Magnolia when they reveal that John C. Riley's by himself. It's just like, <laughs> Henrietta Hippo. <laughs> and then you drive off <laughs> into a chasm in Malibu. I think it's stuck on that. I I'm loved like, it. I don't know who he's talking about. Maybe he's talking about Henrietta Hippo. Who he? CK. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> here's the other one is my dad threw out my, he gave my Ninja Turtles away to Jonathan, the weird boy down the street. And I'm still mad about it. My daughter just started getting into Ninja Turtles and I'm buying her the toys. And you're like, and I'm I gotta like, find this guy and, and get them all back. I'm, I wish I could buy him a Why back. do you think, like, I, I didn't have parents that did that. Why do you think there were parents... <laughs> They loved me. I, why do you think there were That's parents hilarious. that were like, I guess it was like, well, I bought it, and now I'm deciding to I give it think to he else. thought he was doing me a favor, like a boy named Sue, sort of like he's still playing. I played He's got to be a man. Until I was he 18. believes in fucking f fighting turtles and shit. He should believe in Jesus instead. It wasn't Jesus. It was more like uh, the Red Sox and, and oh, cars shit. and he stuff. He wanted you to believe in the real things. But you... I was 18. When did you stop playing with action figures? And I'm going to say this. Don't you still kind of feel like you play with action figures for a yeah, living? Yeah, they're just life-size. Exactly. My mom said something so fucking charming um, to Mark Hamill when we were making Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Mark Hamill tells a story, and I've since, since stole it from him because it's on my set and my mother's in it, so fuck it. It's and my you story own it. Too. Yeah, that's right. So Mark Hamill says to my mom, like, um, you must be so proud of Kevin. Like, what was he like when she was a kid, when he was a kid? And my mom goes... He wasn't much different. He played with a, a toy of you, and now he just plays with you. <sighs> and Mark loved that to death. Please, Hamill, don't hurt him. Yeah, right. <laughs> please, Hamill, don't hurt him. I was like, I hope this story leads to me being able to say, please, Hamill, don't hurt him. It didn't, <laughs> but I still said it. Still, you got it. What a great... There. That's like... Adorbs. 
I'm going to tell that story at your funeral. Do you know, please do. <laughs> People Some, will be like, I didn't know they knew they did that one podcast once, but like he acts like they did an ongoing podcast. Well, like I'll open with the one Kevin pitched to him. I rejected Two of Kevin's them. advances. <laughs> Kevin and Smith he did rejected mine with a lot of people. I was not one of them. That's By right. Choice. You never asked me on yours, and here you're giving me grief. I don't do that. I don't do guests. You don't? Not really. Not like this. Not Less like, effort. Like you, it seems that you're like, if I don't have a guest, what like will you do the show by yourself? My wife and I do the Friday edition and it comes out twice a week. What are you saying? You do two a week? Yeah. You must be rich. Oh, oh hi, house in Ohio <laughs> to pay for it. Makes sense. We're renting this house. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. We can't afford two mortgages. Then why are you doing it? What do you mean? Well, why are you having two places? Oh, no, no, we're can't... renting this house. Renting this house out? This house. But well, you should... bought the house in Ojai. Yeah, we bought oh, it. I thought we were renting this house. I thought you meant you were renting the house No, in I just Ojai. don't want people to think we're, we're you know, What? You don't want them to know mortgages. that you're rich. How dare you? You're richer than me. You got that TV money. You got clerks money. You said you're still oh, eating out on clerks. Let me tell you clerks. what clerks money. I eat out on the reputation of clerks, but clerks money, I was paid $227,000 for clerks. A hundred grand of it blew it. It went to blowing it up from sixteen millimeter. Um, Thirty-five grand went to paying off the budget with interest. So twenty-seven grand plus the credit card interest and shit, and that left me with um, enough money to buy a bot, a Dodge Neon, and to pay like the cast, like the boys, three grand a piece. Jay a grand. The girls a grand because they were only there for a week, but the boys were there for three weeks. And when all was said and done, I had twenty thousand wow. dollars. All the clerk's money is gone okay and it never gets replenished it's not like well you make a clerk you're rich for life no any money i have is spun from like literally hand to mouth like i fucking i have no legacy money no clerks. legacy and money. not because i'm like because i gambled at all yeah. like that's not the deal that was made the deal was we're gonna give you two hundred twenty seven thousand dollars to own this in perpetuity and then i was like oh my god absolutely and oh you got kind of fleeced no, like, why? I got a whole career out of it. They just didn't, they, that's how they did it back then. They bought movies. They didn't, they wanted, like, we could co own this. I they don't like, know how these deals work. I thought maybe they that was used a bad to do deal. T uh, temporary deals, like 10, 15, 20 years. But we were bought by Miramax after Miramax was bought by Disney. And Disney's, like, manifest was like, we own everything. So they can't do these deals where it's like, after 10 years, the filmmaker gets it back. So when they bought the movie, like I remember at the table, they were like, you know, we buy it, we buy it in perpetuity. Mm. And John Pearson, who was our producer's rep, looked at me and be like, that means they'll own it forever. And I was like, yeah, that's why I made it. So if somebody would buy it and own it forever and get it off my fucking plate. Now, mm. years later, of course it'd be ideal to own my own movie. But yeah. that was not part of the thought process when yeah. it was made. So I made it to sell it, and we did. And uh, I didn't get rich, but I got a fucking, I didn't get money rich, but I got it. We have bread now. Yeah, but that came from doing other things. Everyone's just always on the assumption, like, well, fucking Clark's was easy street after that. It's like, not at all. Yeah. Like, I literally had to then do it again and do it again and do it again. I ain't got yeah. that, like, private island money and shit like that. Like, one time we walked into Ben Affleck's house when it was Ben Affleck's house, which is my, my house now and has been for 20 years. And he only lived it for one year, but we still call it Ben Affleck's house. That's a, and the power of the Affleck. he said like, uh, you know, oh, I'm selling this. It's too close to the street and shit. I'm going to buy Drew Barrymore's house. And, and uh, he was touring me and my wife through the house. And then he had to fuck off to get a phone call. My wife and I were alone in the house. And she goes, I want this house. And I was like, well, then you married the wrong guy from Mallrats. He's doing very fucking well. <laughs> and uh, Ben was like, look, if you want this house, I'll sell it to you. And I was like, I don't got that kind of fucking money to buy the house and shit. I was like, not until I write and direct Jersey Girl. He goes, all right, well, live in my house and fucking rent it from me from like five grand a month until you can buy it. And then whatever you paid for in rent will take off the purchase price. Wow. Sweet fucking deal. I raised my kid in that house for like fucking two decades and shit. Wow. Um, With a giant hammer? It's a Harley Quinn joke. I was like, my daughter is have a cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I went with it. <laughs> so weird. I'm a comic book guy and I didn't even go for the giant. I believe we call it a mallet. Okay, yeah, mallet. Yeah. Hammer in our world, which I thought you were a part of, is like a swinging dick. Do you ever? There's a silent Bob. <laughs> God, fucking, you went to a place where you're like, do you ever? Trying to think of a. The very Doug Henning. Illusion. Mr. J and Look silent up into Bob. The air. Mr. J was a character that uh, Gary Joker? Trudeau created for Doonesbury. We just lost Katie. Mr. Butts and Mr. J. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she was like, that my flight. I that is get to the that clue. Flight. 
Mr. J, no, Mr. J is what Harley Quinn calls Joker. Yeah, Mr. J. Mr. J. Yeah. Does she have a Brooklyn accent? Did you fucking Ooh. trying to get the role right there? <laughs> trying to bump Kelly Kelly Quinn out of the cartoon role. You're not casting me in anything because well, what? Yeah, now it's you would imagine the DC people would be like, oh, get fucking Holmes, man. He gets Batman to he be makes Batman. Batman jokes or for anything. They should I put you. It. Matt Reeves should put you in a Batman movie and let you get punched in the face by Batman. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. And, it, and yes. good for your brand. Two. See, if I was in charge of Batman, that's what I'd be doing. If you were in charge of Batman, I would. this would be a pitch meeting, and I'd say, I want to do Batman the Animated Series, but it's with Batman. It's funny Batman. Wait, have you not watched Harley Quinn? Do they, is that what they do? Oh, bro. They beat You're a day too. late and a dollar short. Okay. It's a show that you watch. We need them. And you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show that you watch, and if you're like a funny creative person like ourselves you go why the fuck didn't i think of this first well like cursing cur what well, cursing dc characters why the fuck did, why the fuck didn't i think of yeah, that yeah, first yeah, yeah. but i hold them in such sacrosanct regard yeah. that i was like you can't make fucking well you know honestly I'm, I'm relieved but to batman think cursing and eating pussy like those cartoons are hysterical you would love them watch harley quinn three oh. seasons of it i uh -oh. knocked over your liquid liquid was it open yeah who opened it because i didn't you did. You had a sip of it, you stoner. Did I really? Yes. Such a long time ago. It was like hour one of the podcast. Well, you didn't even drink any of that. It's just evaporated. I, I honestly don't know if I did take a sip. You of it. did. We have the I don't. footage. Somebody I'll handed send me you the... a clip. <laughs> I, I, I want to see that you. clip. I will send you a clip of you drinking that. I'm going to go on record as saying, I don't think I opened it. Perhaps it was handed to me popped open. It was not popped open. You popped it open. I was here. And I was on set the day that Casey I'm, Affleck said, keep antagonizing I'm pretty, me. <laughs> I'm pretty non confrontational. But I don't know. I feel like I didn't open this can. And right, I feel between like the tape is going to tell a different story. And the story. guy that smoked a George Clinton size <laughs> split before he came in. I think, and that I'm was hours ago, me. by the way. That's gone. Now I'm clear headed and I know that I didn't open this can of water. That's why I won't drink from it. My mother told me to never drink from cans that I didn't open myself. Your mom. Okay. And I said, Mom, when you mean cans, you mean big fat titties, right? And she was like, No. <laughs> she was like, Don't make your father get his hammer. I was like, When you say hammer, you mean a big fat swing. You, are, cock, right? you are into euphemisms big time. Even when I was talking about your daughter, you're like, You mean her big dick? <laughs> no. <laughs> the mallet. <laughs> Um, well, don't fucking say mallet now. You should have said mallet first. Man, don't right. be like, You're right. Fuck. Uh, uh, this was a blast. I'm sorry. I should let it end. But I, unfortunately, as you can see, look how relaxed we I are. I can't let fun. a good thing end. I was like, no, don't let it end. This is my sticks moment. Nope. I'm telling you, you don't, don't let, let it end this way. Never heard it before, but I sang along. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much, man. That was convincing, man. man. Hey, I appreciate That's it. That's acting right there, Pete. Right? Yeah, like fucking, because I believe this wholeheartedly, was... I was like, oh, he knows his sticks. But well, you don't know your sticks, I don't do know you? my sticks. You mean my dick, right? <laughs> That's the name of your seventh book. I don't know my sticks. Parentheses. <laughs> but I mean Pete my Holmes. dick, right? <laughs> you a have meditation a on my Johnson by Pete Holmes. I want someone to please tag us both in an Instagram post of every fake book that you said. Somebody and will write them all down. Somebody, and you, you know, we could easily do it, too. Listen to the tape, play back the fucking tape. Yeah, but I want to make a little art Let out a fan of it. do it. Let a fan oh, do well, it. Oh, wow, well, look who's back. There's Katie Maybe Wayne. we all want to take a piss, but don't, you know, for mm. art or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to. Kevin, I really enjoy this even more than yeah, I expected this to. This is absolutely and I enjoy it. same here. Yeah, Thanks I for doing it. it. And I'm Thanks for having me. Touched that you took the time. And would you, this is how we end. Oh, it used to be behind my shoulder. Would, we have the guests say, keep it crispy. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything. It just means, you know what it means? <laughs> No. It's like your thing. Be positive. Don't be a hater. Chase your dreams. So follow then, your bliss. So then you went in 12 seconds from it doesn't really mean anything, dude. It means everything. What I mean is it doesn't mean anything <laughs> make stupid. Make up your mind. I'm Come not, on, Morty. Make up your mind. I'm not trapping you into saying something. <laughs> Can you believe you said it? Everyone says it. I, Justin once again, Long said Once it. again, I'm not like one of these fucking people that's like, there's danger around every corner and go. everyone's out to get me. So I didn't think you were trying to trip it, me up. Tranquility. You put Will words Robinson. in my mouth. You can put anything you want in my mouth, Pete Holmes. Wait. That's right. We're back I said to the dentist. after today. So what am I saying? Keep and what crispy. camera am I looking at? Try to look at all three. Okay, I'll do one word in each one. Keep it crispy. Keep it crispy. I'm probably not on that one. Though. No, that's good. That's my camera, but yeah. I, know, I saw it. That's why I'm, I bet you there's a foot on it. So they're like, oh, he didn't do it. Kick the foot things. on crispy. All right, so hold on. Here, here it is. Keep it crispy. There you go. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's Fun. Fun. You leave me.